Hello, everybody. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Commentary Hubs. I mean, welcome to the Commentary Hub, the home of alternative commentary. And and today's and today's first match is Kidderminster Harriers against West Ham United. Kidderminster did the unthinkable and did and uh, per, and and performed a giant killer against Reading in the third round. Will they do? Can they do the same today against West Ham United of the Premier League? My name is Nicholas Jones. I should be fetching in. I should be fetching in my co-commentator Mike Harneman anytime soon. And we are live also on the commentary hub to JDAC Football, JB Sports, Twitch. And Mike Harneman's purse and Mike Harneman's personal channel. An interesting fact for you before we get up before we get into it is that David Moyes, the West Ham manager, he actually played for Preston North End between 93 and 98 and was actually part of the side that lost to Kidderminster in the 93 94 fourth round. So he does have so he may well have some pre match trepidation and nerves. And, uh, and interestingly, Keith Lowe, who's part of the Kidderminster squad, faced Declan Rice in the League Cup match in 2018 whilst at Macclesfield Town. And the Silkman lost to West Ham United 8-0. In terms of injury and updates, Ogbonna and Fabianski will not start due to injuries. And Michael and Mikhail Antonio also does not feature due to recent international commitments with Jamaica, returning only yesterday morning. As for Kidderminster Harriers... Ethan Freemantle does not feature in today's lineup due to a persistent hamstring injury. And uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, Mike's just actually come in. So good afternoon to you, Mike. Afternoon, Nicholas. How are we doing? Yes, I'm doing. Yes, I'm doing all right. Yourself. Yeah, pretty good, thank you. This should be uh, a very, very good um, cup tie, this one. And, of course, you know, lowly Kidderminster, um, non-league Kidderminster against West Ham, who, you know, got a lot of star uh, quality on the show as well, haven't they? Yes, they certainly Yes, they certainly do, with the likes of Amari Morgan-Smith, um, Ashley Hemmings, who features in there as well, Amari Sterling, um, Austin and Morgan-Smith. Uh, I mean, the captain, Sam Austin, he could be one to look out for as well. Austin and Morgan Smith scored in the third round in the third round match against Reading. And uh, and in their recent and and uh, and Kidderminster, they're on a and Kidderminster, they're on a roll. They've won seven out of their last 10 league matches and they won their last match at home to Leamington on Tuesday in the National League North 3-0. The scorers for that one was were Sterling. Cameron, um, uh, Nathan Cameron, and 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 uh, and Jaden White, who scored in the 90th minute. So plenty of um, Kidderminster players to uh, to look out for. Um, uh, West Ham, unfortunately, they've um, they haven't won their last four league matches um, in this calendar year. Their last league win was away at Watford on December the 28th. So their cup run means nothing um, when compared to their when compared to their league score when compared to their league scores, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course West Ham will still be favourites though, the Premier League side here. Um, although, you know, as you, as you say, Kidmits are in good form. Um, but then when it comes to the FA Cup, obviously, you know, Kidmits are at home as well. Um, West Ham, obviously, the Premier League side. There's plenty of uh, divisions between them and everything like that. But the FA Cup throws up surprises, as we saw last night with Middlesbrough knocking out Manchester United as well. Yes, well, yes, quite a yes, quite a surprise that yes, quite a surprise that was um, Manchester uh, Middlesbrough beating Manchester United on penalties. I personally can't. I personally don't see the same thing happening at Kidderminster. Uh, but what about you? No, I think West Ham would be too strong. Um, I think there's uh, enough quality in this West Ham side to get the job done. Um, but Kidderminster will certainly give them a very good game. Um, these two sides obviously met at this stage. It was in 1994, I believe, where uh, 
West Ham only won by one goal to nil on that occasion um, against the academics to decide who were obviously Football League at that point. But um, it was no, they uh, were no, they actually weren't. They were the Vauxhall Conference at that time. Oh, they they, they were at conference in '94, were they? Okay, that's a fair point. But obviously, regarding um, that game, that it was a, a very close game. So. The divisions obviously didn't really play. Uh, so the, the sorry, the divisions actually played quite a big part on that day. Um, I don't see the divisions playing as much of a part today. I think West Ham will be uh, more comfortable in their win, but you know it's a, a packed out Kidderminster, so um, you never know with the, the joys of the FA Cup. You know we're we're all we're all here and we're all you know looking forward to a, a big cup tie, um, which is made it even better when there's a surprise and you know an upset as well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, kickoff is about kickoff will be in about nine and a half minutes time. Uh, just going to go through the starting lineups. Just going to go through the current starting lineup for Kidderminster. Harriers will have the West Ham lineup for you very shortly. In goal for Kidderminster is Luke Simpson, number one. Number two, Alex Penny. Number three, Caleb Richards. Number four, Nathan Cameron. Number seven, the captain Sam Austin. Number eight, Mark Carrington. Number nine, Amari Morgan Smith. Number 10, Ashley Hemmings. Number 11, Omari Sterling. Number 16, Geraldo Bajrami. And number 28, Matt Preston. The subs, number five, Keith Lowe. Number six, Lewis Montrose. Number 12, J, uh, Joe Fawkes. Number 15, Kezia Martin. Number 18, Kai Lissimore. Number 19, Jaden White. Number 21, Jamie Emery. Number 25, Luke Bastable. And number 26, Devontae Redmond. So, so, so quite a few players. So quite a few players um, that, that might as well stand out. Joe Fawkes, the substitute. He is on loan from League One side Walsall. And Devontae Red and uh, Devontae Red and uh, Devontae Redmond is and Devontae Redmond is um and it, it is also on is all is another player on loan. He's from the national he's from National League side. Wrexham. Amari Sterling is an international for St. Kitts and Nevis. So uh, so 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 it so so it just goes to show that it's not just the big leagues that have international players. Yeah, absolutely right, Nicholas. Um, you know, a lot of the, the lower divisions seem to have the national players now. Um, obviously, you mentioned there regarding uh, the Kidderminster player, but, you know, there's there's quite a few in regards to even players, obviously, in, in League Two, the team that I support, Stevenage of a couple. So, um, the, the, the teams that are, you know, playing their, their football in League Two and the conference and even below the conference are now getting uh, players involved in their national sides, which... It's nice to see that obviously you know the managers are not just looking at the big divisions. Okay, so who have we got for West Ham, Mike? Uh, so the West Ham side. Give me one second here, because um, I did have it on the screen and it's now just decided to freeze on me. So I've got to just give it a little uh, refresh there. But I'll just uh, come to sort that one out now. So apologies about that. Uh, the West Ham sides they line up today. With the goalkeeper being Ariola, then Frederick, Zuma, Diop, and Johnson along the back. Then we've got Kral and Noble in midfield. Um, ahead of them are Bowen, Vlasic, Yarmolenko, and Ben Rama leading the line. And then if you look at the substitutes, it's Creswell, Soufal, Fornells, Dawson, um, Socek, Randolph, Oko Flex, Declan Rice, and Alessi as well. So, um, Plenty of uh, quality on show for West Ham here. Um, and, you know, they're taking it seriously as well as, you know, somebody of uh, West Ham's kind of stature should. And, you know, it's nice to see that the Premier League sides here are taking it seriously against the side um, who are quite a long, uh, well, long, play, long amount of divisions uh, below them. Um, and obviously, you know, not just throwing in all of the kids. So it's nice to see that they've put some senior uh, players on as well. Absolutely, they'll need to. Absolutely, they'll need to as well because um, they'll need to as well because uh, Kidderminster's uh, pitch um, is expect is a lot rougher than what you'd normally expect um, between Premier uh, uh, between the prem, uh, between Premier League clubs and uh, and what I've also what I actually found out this morning 
uh, whilst doing some last minute prep. They are separated by 113 league positions. So that t- so so uh, so that too might mean something. Uh, come towards the end of the game. Uh, the pitch pitch is pitch is looking all right at the moment, um, but um, but it but it's more sort of natural grass rather than the rather than the three G that West Ham are used to. Could that be a disadvantage to them? Um, it could play a part. I don't know whether it will play too much of a part because West Ham obviously have got uh, plenty of good players on show. You know, if you look at the midfield there, uh, there's players that can certainly pass the ball. If you look at the likes of Mark Noble. Um, and players like that, who they've obviously got uh, playing for them today. So, you know, it shouldn't really play too much of a part. But, you know, I think Kinemitz will just be looking for everything they can to give them a little bit of an advantage in this game. OK, we will also be get, we will also be providing you updates um, between the other game going on at half past 12, which is Chelsea against Plymouth Argyle. Um, before, before that game goes underway, how do you see this one going? So, personally, I think West Ham will come out uh, relatively comfortable winners. Um, I think, you know, Kidderminster, I, I think they'll score in this game. I think they'll give the fans something to cheer, but I think West Ham will be too strong. So, um, probably like 4-1 West Ham, in my opinion. Um, and I think even the Kidderminster fans, you know, the fact they'll see a goal for their side, they won't be able to argue too much with that. Um, but how do you also see uh, uh, Chelsea against Plymouth play out quickly? <laughs> Yeah, that's another good game as well. Chelsea uh, at home, obviously, in that one. Um, I think they'll comfortably go go through as well. I'm going to go 3-0 Chelsea for that one. Right, right, yes. And uh, and uh, and interestingly, before we and interestingly, before we kick off, the players are now getting ready to come up. They've actually they've actually included Andre Yarmolenko because after a recent incident in which he was involved in. Uh, do you see that as a surprise? Um, a little bit, but I think it's just a matter of getting him out there uh, and just trying to get him, you know, focused on uh, on his football rather than anything else really now. So, a little bit of a surprise, but I think um, it's probably uh, a good time to do it when you're obviously playing a, an FA Cup side here in a game that you know, you, realistically you're expected to win, aren't you, if, if you're West Ham? That's right. Um, the, that's right. So, now the players are coming out um, of the tunnel at Agbra, Mark Noble leading his side out. Currently, the longest-serving uh, captain at any top club in Europe. Uh, please let me know, please let me know if this is incorrect um, in the li- in the live chat. So, good turnout between uh, West Ham and Kidderminster. In fact, Kidderminster coming out onto the pitch now. Sam Austin uh, leading the side out. They score. They score. They scored an incredible giant killer at. They, they scored an incredible giant killer at Reading. Will, can they replicate that today? I personally think that uh, Kidderminster are going to be giving it all they've got. And uh, and uh, another thing in and uh, and another thing I should mention is that both clubs' promotion ambitions could not be any more different. Kidderminster vying for promotion in the National League North. And West Ham, they're aiming for a slot in the Europa League group stage. So, th- so another reason why those two are complete worlds apart. Never mind poles. And uh, and uh, David Moyes now coming out onto the pitch, shakes hands with Russ Penn, the Kidderminster Harriers uh, manager. Um, how how well do you think uh, Russ Penn has um, has led the Carpetmen uh, throughout this season, given their National League North position? Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, obviously they've, they've done very well to get to this stage of the FA Cup. Um, and then obviously they pulled out a very big game here as well. So, um, yeah, credit to, to Russell Penn there for everything that he's done. Um, and this kid amidst the side, obviously the main aim for them in, in years uh, to come will be obviously to get their position back in the Football League, um, which will obviously be uh, the, their main priority, I'm sure, no doubt, after their relegation um, and then obviously being relegated again since as well. Yes, absolutely. And uh, just just having a look at the formations now. Simpson in goal, then Penny, Cameron, Preston and Richards, the back four. Two midfielders of Carrington and Bajrami. Hemmings, Austin and Sterling make up the forward three. Amari Morgan-Smith is the lone striker. And now we come on to West Ham. 
Ariola starting in goal, still in place of the injured Lukas Fabianski. Then it's Frederick, Zuma, Diop and Johnson, the back four. Mark Noble and and uh, and Alex Kraus are the two midfielders and they are backing up Yarmolenko, Ben Rama and Vlasic. Gerard Bowen is the lone striker. So both sides playing a 4-2-3-1 formation. Um, who do you think is going to... Who do you think is going to gain? Um, it's so. Does this look fairly even to you? Um, that looks like they're trying to match each other in in regards to formation. Yeah, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm not too sure whether that's going to play a part in the the outcome of the the game. As I said just a few minutes ago, I do think West Ham, with the amount of experience and the amount of players that have played Premier League minutes, um, will be too strong for Kidderminster here. Um, just having a look here. Obviously, there's uh, Gerardo Pedrami there as well, who's a former under-21 international with Albania. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because these Kinemitzer players, obviously, they've got nothing to lose. So, it be interesting to see if they start off, you know, really uh, on the front foot and try and take it all to, to West Ham here now. Uh, because if they get an early goal, then, you know, it makes for a really interesting cup tie, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, both 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 that, both... Both fans and players now undergoing a minute's applause. Um, um, for, um, can anyone tell me in the light? Can anyone tell me in the live chat or otherwise who who this is for, please? As I was uh, as I was unaware that this was going to happen. So um, so Ag so so Agra looks very well packed to me. I think in the last I think in their last league match against Leamington, it averaged about it averaged something like just over a thousand. Uh, the referee and the match officials uh, getting ready to um, uh, guess everyone in position. We'll let you know. We'll let you know who the match officials are shortly. And uh, Bajrami, uh, guessing wish good luck. Guessing wish the good luck from his team. From his team. And uh, and uh, West Ham playing their th playing their away strip with the uh, uh, blue and white stripes, making them. And uh, to me, this looks like um, a lighter version of Coventry City's um, sky blue outfit. And in fact, it's going to be West Ham to uh, to kick us off. And they take the knee as one in support for the ongoing fight against racism. I've just got the match officials here for you as well. Uh, referee is Jonathan Moss. Uh, he's assisted by Mark Perry and Timothy Wood. And on fourth official duty is Lee Doughty as well. So, um, obviously, there's no VAR. The fact it's obviously um, not being played at a top division ground. And as we say that, we're underway at Agbra. And the ball has gone straight out for a goal kick already. It's all, it's all hap it's happened already, hasn't it? So, uh, Luke Simpson... Uh, to uh, to roll the ball out straight away, and uh, as and I was and as as I was about to and and as Mike uh, clarified, no VAR, no complicated technology, just what we want. It's just going to it's just going to come down to proper football, and that's what and that's what the fan in all of us wants to see. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, it's uh, it's nice to have um, a game without uh, the technology. You know, sometimes it's needed, but. Uh... Sometimes it's it's nice to see you know just the the, the players on the pitch, um, giving their all and you know obviously there's no uh, VAR which obviously is the thing that can sometimes take away from the actual enjoyment of the game itself. So um, nice to see that you know it's not always going to be included in the game at every level. That's right. West Ham now currently in possession. That was uh, that was uh, Isa Diop. Um, he crossed forward to I think. He crossed forward, so I think that was uh, Yarmolenko throw into West Ham, um, and, it'll, and the ball's now going to be picked up by number twenty-four, Ryan Fredericks, and, and he's now crossed up front. So I think he was aiming for, I think he was aiming for Said Ben Rama, but uh, defend, but Kidderminster defended that one really well. Yeah, they did. They defended that one excellently. Did uh, the Kidderminster? Their West Ham were actually the side that are starting on the front foot. Um, trying to make that, you know, um, advantage, obviously, uh, count early on. The fact that there's so many places between them and so many divisions between them and their decide that are really 
trying to take it to Kidderminster at the moment, but uh, Kidderminster, you know, staying strong at the moment and, and standing up to it. Yes, certainly. And uh, Kidderminster briefly and Morgan Smith briefly took the ball from uh, briefly took the ball from uh, Alex Crow, but uh, but uh, but so uh, but so uh, it looks as though West Ham are still very much on the front foot. They were getting that. They were getting they're getting ever closer to they're getting ever closer to the goal and I think that was uh, Crowell who had it briefly. Now it's back with now it's back with Ryan Frederick. Now it's no what now it was back with uh, Ben Johnson. I do apologise. Johnson uh, passes uh, down towards uh, that looks uh, that looked like Mark Noble. Now it was back with uh, Johnson and cross into the uh, goal area but cleared out on the spot clearance by. Uh, I think that was uh, um, uh, Preston. Uh, just, going, yes. just going back to uh, Ben Johnson there a moment as well. I really like Ben Johnson. Obviously, he's a young uh, fullback here for West Ham. And he's one of those players, that obviously, he's only sort of started to break into this West Ham side in the last sort of year or two. Uh, but he's really, you know, uh, coming to the side and he's showing what he's about. Um, he's one of those players that, you know, I think he's got a, a very big future in the game and will soon be uh, knocking on the door for an England call-up, I'm sure, as well. Could well be. Could well be. You just could well be. You just never know. As uh, West Ham have had to... Uh, as West Ham are now uh, passing backwards and forwards uh, in between the goal. This is Ryan Fredericks. Fredericks crosses upfield and finds... Um, y and finds Yama and finds Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko to Ben Rama. Ben Rama passes back to Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko trying to look. Yarmolenko trying to look for a way through. Kidderminster trying to uh, intimidate him, but uh, so far it's so far it's succeeding in keeping the ball out. It's cleared by Alex Penny. Penny now passes, and it's now gone back towards uh, West Ham. Still nil nil between them at the minutes after four minutes, and after seven minutes, it is still nil nil between Chelsea. And Plymouth. Meantime, West Ham still West Ham still have the ball, and uh, now it's back. And now it's with Mark Noble, the captain, Mister West Ham. The fans call him, given his um, given his uh, hundreds of appearances, has only has been West Ham captain since 2015. And as Mike says, that. Uh, that's a West Ham have possibly made the right call by bringing in experienced players rather than rather than the young academy players. No, as... absolutely. Sorry, sorry just to, to butt in and, and cut in there a minute as well. I think that this West Ham side is very, very strong. Um, I was actually quite surprised with how strong David Moyes obviously went for it. Um, went for, you know, with the lineup today. Uh, but as you mentioned, you know, I don't, I don't know if you've already mentioned it in stream, but obviously you mentioned it uh, sort of away from from the, the actual stream itself that uh, David Moyes has got. His own experiences of being knocked out by um, Kidderminster Harriers as well. So maybe that's played a part in obviously the fact he wanted to go really strong with his West Ham side to make sure the same thing doesn't happen um, with one of the sides that he's managing. Corner taken and a recent shot by Ben Johnson, which went over the crossbar um, in, in, I think, in, I think that was the, uh, in, I think that was the, after five and a half minutes um, I personally think he shot um, uh, too far away. Uh, what do you make of that one, Mike? Yeah, he's getting into good positions, but I just think he's got his uh, shot sort of a little bit wrong there. Um, yeah, he, he, he was given a, a, a sort of bit of a free run at goal, really, by uh, Kidderminster there. Uh, but, you know, it was a, a decent enough effort in regards to, you know, getting the ball forward. But then actually with the, the shot itself, um, Kidderminster so sort of just dealt with it easy. They didn't really have to do anything. The goalkeeper or anything really did they? Um, ben Johnson there, obviously the uh, nephew of Paul Parker as well, former uh, FA Cup winner and Manchester United man. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think West Ham almost had another attempt, but it was uh, just picked up by uh, by Luke Simpson. And uh, Simpson now looking to uh, to find the best way to uh, direct the ball out of the out of the goal area. Not much to. Not much to smile about right now for a for a for Russ Penn, but given the unpredictability of this um, of um, of the FA Cup, that could that could well change anytime soon. As uh, Amari Morgan Smith uh, has just deflected the ball up into the air, but was uh, quickly cleared up by the West Ham defenders. And as I speak, Kidderminster coming close to scoring and a shot on 
Target by Sam Austin. Saved by Alphonse Ariola. Austin was one of the players to Austin was one Austin was one of the players who scored against who scored in the third round against Reading and very nearly did so against West Ham. Yeah, Kidderman's are getting more of a foothold in this game now. Um, obviously, West Ham started brightly, but the fact that it still remains nil-nil, I think uh, Kidderman's are uh, starting to grow in confidence a little bit. Russ Penn has said throughout this tournament he is not afraid of facing anyone. If he could face Manchester United, he said, bring it on. And they're certainly doing that. As uh, as West Ham are now back in possession with the ball with Mark Noble, Amari Morgan Smith sizing him up, but 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 so Noble passes um, towards um, but but Noble passes towards I think that was uh, Kurt Zuma. Kurt Zuma crosses the ball upfield. He's trying to get to um, Saeed Ben Rama, but saved by but saved by Luke Simpson. If anything, it's but if anything, it's only ratcheted up the atmosphere. Yeah, well, um, just just for a second, I just want to um, come in here as well. We've had a goal at Stamford Bridge, and that goal is not gone to Chelsea. It's gone to Plymouth Argyle. Um, Gillespie scoring the goal, and it's the League One sides who are starting to cause their upset early on. Uh, eight minutes played, Chelsea one 0 down against Plymouth. Could it be another upset? Obviously, they lost to Bradford um, in the. Cup competition um, not many years sorry, ago now. Sorry, we're not you, Mike. Recent shot up, recent attempt on goal, and that was from Ashley Hemmings. Um, saved. Um, that was Austin who played it in, and uh, and Hemmings uh, lines it up with the shot at the right time, but was unlucky for um, Ariola to save. Yeah, no, I was just saying that just before, uh, obviously. Um, what happened there with uh, that that save there? Chelsea obviously lost four two to League One side Bradford um, in the FA Cup in uh, 2015, and it's uh, the League One side that are leading now as well by a goal to nil against Chelsea. Um, and Chelsea have gone very very strong as well. They've got the likes of Lukaku, they've got Mason Mount and Kovacic and Jovino uh, and uh, Ziyech and Hassan the Doyle. They've got some you know uh, good players on for for Chelsea, and it's. Plymouth that are actually causing the upset at the minute and beating them by a goal to nil. Corner taken by West Ham and Mark Noble was trying to cross it into the goal area, but blocked very well by the Harriers captain, Mark uh, Sam Austin, and another corner to be taken by West Ham. Mark Noble to take the corner again, straight in towards, straight in towards, um, straight in towards Ryan Fredericks, but uh, now back towards Noble. Now it's with cuts. Now it's with, uh, now it's with Saif Ben Rama. Ben Rama straight in, straight into the goal there through through Yarmolenko, but cleared out by West Ham. West Ham, West Ham, West Ham, West Ham doing really well to keep West Ham United out through those got uh, th uh, through those corner attacks. But that might change anytime soon. And in fact, it but in fact it doesn't. Kidderminster still holding their ground across in towards across in by uh, Issa Diop. Uh, but uh, but a throw-in has been given to West Ham. Now it's back with Mark Noble. Noble passes back towards Diop. Diop to Ryan Fredericks. Now towards uh, Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko. But tackled by but tackled by Ashley Hemmings. Hemmings now towards Amari Morgan Smith. Morgan Smith holding onto the ball for. For West for Kidderminster, but deflected by Kurt Zuma. West Ham's defence just as strong as uh, Kidderminster's right now. But um, but uh, what do you think uh, Hemmings uh, could have done differently? Um, I don't think he could have done too much differently there. I think he was sort of going on a very uh, strong run there. Um, you know, maybe I don't know whether he's got a bit of space to take another touch and before he has the shot, but. Um, Kidderminster, as I said before, are really getting themselves a foothold in this game now. When um, actually, to be fair, in the last few minutes, uh, the side who I think are on top at the at the moment, and you know, West Ham, 130, what was it, 130 places, 131 places ahead of them, but it doesn't look like that um, on the pitch at the moment. No, you'd no, you'd think, you know, you'd think they are in the same division 
um, the, uh, the way uh, the way those two are playing against each other. But um, uh, Amari Sterling recently um, ha- um, had an attempt on goal just now, but uh, but was uh, deflected by uh, the defence. And uh, Ryan Fredericks almost ha- almost caught the ball, but it's out for a throw in. Um, after 12 minutes, it's still it's still nil it's still nil nil between Kidderminster and West Ham. And you're listening to the commentary hub with myself, Nicholas Jones, and Mike Harneman. Still what still one nil to Plymouth in their in their away game against Chelsea. Throw into Kidderminster, but picked up by Mark Noble for West Ham. That was a poorly timed that was a poorly timed throw in, and uh, and uh, still and still nothing to choose between these two. Although, like Mike has said, Kidderminster are still. The team, which are very much on the front foot, and a free kick has been given to uh, the carpet men. It'll be Amari Sterling to take the free kick. Obviously, so yeah. they're so lining themselves up, and uh, Sterling tries to power it forward, but blocked very well by Nikolai Vlasic as uh, Penny now kicks the ball up into the air, and it's picked up by it by uh, Sterling once more, but uh, but West Ham clear it away. I was just going to say, obviously, it's very early days in this game still. When I think Kidderminster really need to put the ball into the back of the net. Um, because, you know, as we said, this West Ham side, very experienced with who they decided to put on today. And uh, Kidderminster, you know, uh, uh, as we've just said a minute ago, rightly, um, you know, would be sort of uh, looking to, to grab the first goal in this game and then, you know, seeing what happens and, and how West Ham can come back. But, so at the minute, looking very, very good. And uh, if they can get the first goal, as I said earlier, it'll be uh, certainly interesting to see what happens from there and if they can continue on and you know cause another upset as they did last round. Yeah, he's Sterling now with the ball, but uh, but uh, beaten but beaten to it by West Ham. Now it's Sam, but now it's uh, Austin. Austin tries to find Hemmings by crossing into the goal area, but I think. Um, Alphonse Ariola got a hand to it. I didn't quite see, but it's, but, but it's been cleared away now by West Ham, but headed back by Kidderminster. Now it's Mark Noble for West Ham. Noble crosses um, up the field, but um, but picks up by Simpson. He uh, Jarrod Bowen was a long way from the Jarrod Bowen was a long way from the ball. Um, what was Mark Noble even thinking? Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, obviously. Uh, the two West Ham players not on the same wavelength there, um, which is a bit of a surprise considering they're two of the players that play pretty much week in, week out, or near enough week in, week out with each other in the Premier League. Yeah, very much. So yeah, yeah, they may well have not they may well have not been on the same wavelength, but it's still nil-nil between Kidderminster and West Ham. And a throw in has been given to Harriers. And a throw, and uh, it will be taken. But and it, and it will be taken. I I can't see. I can't tell who it is that uh, that's taken the uh, the throne. But it's now with Hemmings and cleared away by uh, Ben Johnson, and the ball has gone out again for a throw. And this time to West Ham. Russell Penn. He must be quietly satisfied. He must be quietly satisfied with um, how things are going for them right now. But um, but West Ham appeared to have upped the ante. Uh, now it's Noble to Johnson. No, no, no. Sorry, Zuma back towards Noble. Noble to Ben Rama. Ben Rama now with the ball for West Ham, but tap, but oh, but looks like it's going to be tackled by Gerardo Bajrami. But West Ham uh, doing well to hold up. But do it. West Ham doing well to hold on to it. Now Kidderminster have now Kidderminster have the ball, and it's a and it's going to be another throw in to Harriers. Um, I said that. Uh, I said that. Uh, I said that West Ham appeared to have up the ante, but Kidderminster um, appeared to appeared to be uh, appeared to be uh, upping the ante back on them. And a fight is going on between uh, Bajrami and uh, Ben Rama. Uh, it's uh, uh, quickly diffused, but um, but yeah, you but... you said there obviously West Ham. You, you think that West Ham are obviously up in the ante a little bit or trying to? Um, as you just said there, you know, you, you rightly kind of just said that. Kidderminster have uh, said to West Ham, if you can, you know, we'll see what you can throw at us and we'll we'll give you something back to, to deal with as well. And um, they're the side that are really on the front foot and you know, they're looking good at the minute at Kidderminster as well. It doesn't look like there's that many places between them and that many divisions between them. And, uh, you know, that's the, the magic of the FA Cup. These Kidderminster players are determined to make themselves heroes. 
Surprise, surprise, Sir Jeff Hurst, who won the cup with Kidderminster in 1964, um, is present at Agbra as Luke Simpson uh, clears the ball out of the out of the goal area. As uh, now it's with uh, Hem now it's with uh, Hemmings for Kidderminster. Still managing to hold on to the ball, but taken away now by West Ham. It's now with uh, uh, Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko passes downfield to um, yeah, Issa Diop. Now it's with uh, Gerard Bowen. Back to Diop. Not for long, though, as he fouls Amari Morgan-Smith. Amari Morgan-Smith has gone down. That was... a. Uh, that to me, that looked like an unnecessary foul by Diop. Your thoughts, Mike, please. Yeah, so I'm actually just a little bit ahead of you in, in regards to uh, the stream as well. But it did look like it was a foul. Um, and yeah, Kidderminster, you know, as we were just saying, really looking like they want to get themselves ahead in this game at the minute. And um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens because they are putting a lot of pressure on this West Ham defence. Free kick to Kidderminster as a result. Um, of the West Ham foul, Issa Diop lucky to get away with lucky lucky to get away with this in my view. Should have been cautioned, but um, but so he obviously wasn't, and it'll be a Mar and it looks like it'll be Amari Sterling um, to uh, to take the free kick, or will it be or will it be Ashley Hermings? In fact, um, Amari Morgan Smith runs up through the field, runs up uh, to take his position um, inside the free kick area. As uh, Sterling raises his hand and kicks the ball into the goal area, and it, and a goal has been given to Killer Mr. Harriers. It looks like it was good. It looked like it was Alex Penny. Indeed, it was. Shock or a shock surprise? Killer Mr. The first goal of the game. Just the sort of performance they displayed when they were at Reading, and Alex Penny. And Alex Penny, that is his fifth goal of the season in all competitions. And that's a great ball in as well from the free kick there. Picks him out perfectly, really. A uh, bit poor goalkeeping from Alphonse Ariola. Uh, just kind of, you know, lets the ball um, kind of slip through his gloves there a little bit. And he, or he just kind of drops the ball there straight down to Alex Penny. But no messing about there for the Kidderminster man. And to be fair, uh, they deserve to be one though up as well. And, you know... Uh, you can't argue with that. Even West Ham fans won't be able to argue with that. Kidderminster have been on top in this uh, first 20 minutes or so and deserve to be um, one goal ahead as they are now. And Russ Penn is and Russ Penn is completely ecstatic, just punching the air as uh, as uh, that was as uh, that was a superb as that was a superb opener for the for the former uh, from Penny, the former a cat. The former Hull City Academy player. He's also played for the likes of Peterborough United and Hamilton Academical. But his uh, non-league experience includes Stourbridge and not and Nuneaton Borough. And that was in the 19th minute. Sterling tries to find um, Morgan Smith, but is uh, cut out by Diop. And those two won't leave each other alone. They will now as Morgan Smith... Finds Amari Sterling, but quickly saved by Alphonse Ariola. Has he wise to them now? Yeah, possibly. Um, obviously, he just made a mistake for the goal just a moment ago, but he seems to be uh, a bit stronger with his hands than with his goalkeeper in that timeout. Um, but yeah, Kidderminster fans loving this one right now, and uh, rightly so as well. Um, you know, the, the manager Russell Penn when they when they scored as well, um, obviously he was uh, loving that one. He was running up and down the touchline. Um, and, and celebrating. Obviously, you can see the joy on his face. You can see the joy on these Kidderminster uh, fans' uh, face as well right now uh, for you know all different ages that they've got in the crowd. Uh, packed out Agba as well. Um, and they're there witnessing a uh, cup upset at the moment with their uh, Kidderminster side doing very, very well to lead this West Ham side by goal to nil. If you want to get in, if you want to get in touch with us and just give us your thoughts on the game, then do please get in touch with us on Twitter at Commentary Live One and also on our Facebook page, facebookcom stroke the commentary hub. As uh, as uh, West Ham have been given a throw in as Zuma throws to Mark Noble. I did say actually, didn't I? That I saw uh, Kidderminster scoring in this game, Nicholas. So 
that's something that I've obviously called correctly already in this match. And uh, I didn't see him scoring the first goal, though. Yep, still nil. Yep, still one nil between Chelsea and Plymouth at Stamford Bridge. Plym the Pilgrims still lit. The Pilgrims still leading the Blues, so it looks like they could be on the way to creating a shock of their own. As uh, as uh, as it looked like um, Ben Johnson was a uh, was a uh, closing in on the Kidderminster goal, but Sir Harry is doing really well to uh, to uh, defend that one. David Moyes in conversation uh, with. Uh, uh, with the manage, uh, 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 with the rest of his management, what must be going through his mind as as it looks like a corner has been given to uh, to I think that as it no no I beg your pardon is in fact a throw into a kid. It's a thrown taken by Alex Penny, um, Morgan White, Morgan White, no no Morgan Smith and Austin are already heroes in Kidderminster. Will Alex Penny be a hero of their own? We shall see as an indirect free kick has been awarded to, to uh, Kidderminster. I think and... Alex Penny, to be fair, will be a hero now, no matter the outcome for obviously scoring in this game against West Ham. They could go on and, you know, they could end up losing this game. But the fact that they've gone 1-0 up against West Ham here, um, I think Alex Penny will be... Uh, you know, uh, certainly getting hero, getting um, hero status anyway, no doubt, whatever the result. Yes, yes, certainly. And if Kidderminster, and if, uh, and, uh, and, uh, but, um, but, uh, but uh, some people are wanting Kidderminster to do a Lincoln City from a few years ago. If you remember, uh, for, for fans that remember, Lincoln City made it through to the quarterfinals in 2017. Can Kidderminster do the same with Ashley Hemmings? But uh, quickly blocked by Ryan Fredericks and picked up by by Ariola. And I think he's and I think he might have paid for it uh, with a and I think he might have paid for it um, by being fouled. Um, I couldn't see I couldn't see who brought him down. It looked like it might have been uh, Mark Noble. I think um, it was possibly Mark Noble. Yeah. But just going on to Lincoln City, there what you were saying a minute ago. Obviously, they got through to the quarterfinals. Obviously, uh, Sutton United were the side who um, got through as well, sort of pretty much alongside them. And they were there um, and just went out in the round before the quarterfinals. And that was obviously uh, the, the year that Arsenal went on to win it by facing both of those two sides and beating them. Yes, yeah, certainly. And now a free kick has been awarded to Kidderminster. Can they convert it into... Can they convert it into a second goal? Had that had it not have been for those um, earlier slip ups, had it not been for those slip ups earlier in the first half, they could well have been two. They could have well been two or even three nil up already. But um, but uh, but uh, the Reds have been getting stronger and stronger as more as Sterling goes for a free kick, but it's deflected. How unlucky could you get? That was a very good effort there from uh, Sterling as well for Kidderminster. Um, you know, uh, as, as we say, you know, we can't keep praising them um, enough here at the moment. Kidderminster, they're, you know, giving everything they can uh, and everything they've got to this West Ham side and deserve it uh, 1-0 leaders at the moment. Certainly. And now it's Fredericks with the ball for West Ham, deflected away by uh by Kidderminster it's now picked up by uh Sam Austin Morgan Smith towards I think that was to Smith I think that was towards Penny now it's cleared up by uh Caleb Richards I haven't seen much of, I haven't seen much of him so far in this game Zuma the French international to um so I think that was uh so I think that was Johnson but uh so we'll have that's so we'll have to check on well we'll have to check on that one headed by Mark Carrington Carrington to what was aiming for uh Caleb Richards but West Ham have now picked it up his side Ben Rama towards that that no sorry that was a Jared Bowen towards uh, Ryan Fredericks and uh and uh, that was and uh, that was a mistimed effort um uh, by uh, by the Hammers, just taking a look at that again. Bowen passed to uh, Fredericks, but uh, but it was actually cleared by a Kidderminster defender. Yeah, they defended very very well with Kidderminster as well. West Ham haven't really had much of a sniff yet. You know, I'm looking at some stats here now. Uh, they have had more possession. They've had 73 percent possession to 27 um, in their favour, but you know they're still yet to actually have an attempt on target at the Hammers as well. 
numbers mean numbers mean nothing if numbers mean nothing if your opposition um, is the strongest side. And a corner has been given to West Ham. Uh, John Moss clears the Jonathan Moss puts the errant ball out of the way as he now uh, walks on and signals for the corner. Signals for the corner kick to happen. Yeah, just straight to, to to what I was saying. Sorry, mate. Um, in regards to you know what I was saying about the the shots on target for West Ham and the fact they're yet to have a shot on target, it just shows that you know this Kidderminster side are very determined to to keep the ball out of the back of the net. Um, and they're defending very very well at the moment. Is what I was getting at. They're certainly doing that. Uh, Twenty seven and a half minutes in, still Kidderminster one, West Ham West Ham nil. And it's still, and it's also still, uh, and it's also still Chelsea one, Plymouth Argyle, and no, sorry, Chelsea nil, Plymouth Argyle one, um, at Stanford Bridge, and back to the here and now at Agbra, as it's a throw in to Ryan Fredericks for for West Ham. He throws to uh, he throws to Kral. Now it's been picked up by Carrington and we was aiming for Hemmings, but it's now gone to, uh, I think that's, I, I think that was uh, Nikola Vlasic. Indeed it is. Vlasic, uh, the Croatian international crosses, but, but can't, but couldn't quite convert it into, uh, but, but couldn't quite find uh, Gerard Bowen. What, what, but I couldn't quite find Gerard Bowen again. Are they not on the same wavelength? Yeah, it, it looks like that way at the moment. It looks like these West Ham players, for whatever reason, or um, you know, whatever the the problem is uh, with some of these players here at the moment, trying to find their teammates, they just can't seem to do so. But I think that's more credit down to Kidderminster and the way they, that they're uh, setting up and and how they're playing, um, kind of stopping West Ham from playing their game as much as you know David Moyes would have wanted side to do. Got to quickly apologise. It was actually Andre Yarmolenko he was aiming for, um, but um, but uh, but uh, but but as we said, nothing quite came of it. And the throw-in to be taken by Kidderminster and Alex Penny um, to Alex Penny to uh, to take the throw um, for 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 the carpetman. Uh, David Moyes, he must be getting the butterflies in his stomach already as Hemmings throws, was aiming for Morgan Smith. He found it, but he found him, but the ball went out of the, but the ball went out of play and it's a throw in to West Ham. And you're listening to the commentary hub with myself, Nicholas Jones and Mike Harneman. You can also hear us on the commentary hub too. Uh, JDAC Football, JB Sports, Storm FM. We're also live on Twitch was alive on our Twitch channel as and also Mike Harneman's channel, uh, Miso Harney 1987. As just West going Ham back to what you were saying as well, um, about David Moyes just a moment ago. Obviously, you know, we, we said about he wouldn't want to be knocked out, um, by kit by uh, sort of um, obviously a lower division side as a player and as a manager, but it's looking like that right at the moment. Certainly is right now, but uh, West Ham appeared to have gained back some momentum. Ben Rama now with the ball. He crosses, tries to find um, uh, Bowen, I think it was, but Sir Kidderminster um, holding their ground really well. And it's now with um, um, Issa Diop. Issa Diop um, tried to uh, pick up the ball for West Ham, but uh, Morgan Smith uh, did very well. But Morgan Smith did very well to, uh, to did very well to uh, to clear that one. Uh Joined from Toulouse in 2018, did um, Issa Diop and featured in West Ham's Europa League campaign as uh, Caleb Richards uh, picks up the ball for West Ham, uh, for Kidderminster's throw, which he does, finds um, Sterling and now with uh, Ryan Fredericks. Fredericks defending it, but not for long. Bajrami has it, but uh, West Ham still managing to keep... Uh, their possession of the ball. It's now with Ben Rama. Ben Rama holding on really well. Not for long, though, has been intercept. Good interception by, I think, that good interception by, by that Kidderminster player. Couldn't see who it was, but um, but uh, Kidderminster are just running rings round West Ham at this minute. Yeah, absolutely. They, they really are as well. Um, and, you know, very good value for, for being ahead um, right now as well. 
Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Must actually admit it was actually number twenty-eight. Prep. It was actually. It was actually number twenty. It was actually number twenty-eight. Matt Preston. So good. So, so 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 good bit of defensive work there by Preston, and it's now back with Mark Noble for West Ham. Thirty-two minutes gone. Still, Kidderminster one, West Ham nil, and. And it's still, and it's also still one nil between um, Chelsea and Plymouth, with the Pilgrims in front. The two upsets on the cards already, Nick. So uh, it's exactly what we want to hear, isn't it? What we want to see. This is this is it. This is complete. This is exact. This is completely what we want to hear. I couldn't agree. This is completely what we want to hear. I couldn't agree with you more. We've got more coverage of the FA Cup coming up on the commentary hub. At eight o'clock this evening, Tottenham will host Brighton. Uh, John Stuttard, JB, and Luke Turson will be will be on commentary duty for that one. And on Sunday at twelve pm, uh, kick off with between Liverpool and Cardiff. Russ Vernon will be on commentary duty for that one. Don't forget, we also have the fifth round draw um, at the same time. And at four o'clock, um, the big match Sunday, really, isn't it? The uh, Nottingham not Forest. Forest against Leicester City with Trevor Sports and Chris Whiteman. Uh, you were saying, Mike? No, I was just saying, obviously, that's a, a big match, isn't it, for Nottingham Forest and Leicester, um, both for, for different reasons. Obviously, Nottingham Forest, you are going to sell out their stadium there, um, knocked out Arsenal last time out, and for their reward is obviously um, a home tie against the Leicester City side, who obviously went on and won the tournament last year. That's right. So that's right. And as Zuma um, uh, sends the ball out of um, um, sends the ball out of sends the ball um, uh, off the field, and it's now and it's now back in play. Zuma crosses and and tries to find uh, Gerard Bowen, but uh, but but was uh, quickly dealt with by Kidderminster. Simpson now uh, picks up the ball. That was a great bit. Of, that was a great bit of work there by Nathan Cameron. Uh, who, who, as I, who, as I mentioned, was was one of the scorers in Kidderminster's last game against last league game against Lamington. Yeah, Nathan uh, Cameron obviously uh, played uh, his football he started off at Coventry City as well. Um, the thirty-year-old uh, um, who was born in Birmingham, so obviously he's got experience of playing at a higher division. Yep, certainly does. Kurt Zuma has international experience with France, by contrast, as do so many West Ham players, such as Alex Crowell, uh, the Czech Republic international. It's now with Ryan Fredericks. Ryan Fredericks passes to um, Issa Diop. Diop now um, very much passes to Mark Noble. I was just going to say he was uh, um, hit, hit at, uh, with it when he had his time with the ball. He was very much in control of it. But it's now gone back towards Zuma. Zuma finds. Uh, I think that uh, Zuma found. I think that was. Uh, and now it's with uh, Johnson. I couldn't see who the, who the player was. Yarmolenko um, gets a touch of the ball inside, um, just inside the six-yard box, but nothing, but nothing doing. And it's now with Jarrod Bowen. Bowen pass. Bowen passes back to uh, Mark Noble. Bowen tries to pick it up, but but couldn't. Courtesy of Amari Sterling, and it's now gone back to Isa Diop. For West Ham, and it's now gone to uh, Kurt Zuma. Zuma crosses upfield and tries to get to uh, Nikola Vlasic. Vlasic has the ball, passes to I think that was passed to I think that was Johnson. Johnson tries to send it into the goal area, but couldn't because the Kidderminster defence are, are are getting ever stronger, and we now have just under ten minutes until half time. Kidderminster defended very, very well there, sorry, as well um, against this West Ham side. West Ham getting, you know, a little bit more into the game in the last few minutes, um, kind of trying to get more on the front foot. But Kidderminster are standing up to everything that West Ham can throw at them right now. Certainly are. I mean, they certainly are. And uh, and and it dep- and uh, and it'll be very interesting to hit to see what, um, what tactics David Moyes can come up to. Can can come up with um, um, uh, during the halftime interval, but um, but so West Ham now have are now in possession 
uh, with the ball and it's now got and it was aiming for uh, Gerard Bowen. I couldn't see who it was that was trying to get to him. It might have been uh, Ben Rama. And yes, in fact, it was. And a corner uh, has been given to West Ham. It will be taken by Mark Noble. And Noble runs towards the fit, runs towards the corner. West Ham have had five corners. Kidderminster, none. Ben Rama with the ball for uh, West Ham. That looked like a short corner to uh, to me. Diop. Diop passes to Fredericks. Fredericks now has the now has the ball. He passes to Gerard Bowen. Gerard Bowen, West Ham's current top league scorer this season. Johnson. And a slip up by Mark Noble. He couldn't get to the ball. He he just couldn't get to the ball. Did he get his feet? Did he get his um stud stuck in some turf or something? Yeah, it looks like ever so uh, possible that he may have done. Uh, but you know, Kidderminster sort of uh, might be riding out their luck a little bit with that one. But certainly not riding out their luck when it comes to um, how they played in this first half. They have played very very well. Yeah, still, yeah, still, yeah, still the same, yeah, still the same score. Yeah, yeah. Now just going to look at uh, Chelsea against Plymouth, and the Blues have equalised. Curtis and the Blues have equalised. Um, and as Pilaqueta has got himself onto the score sheet, it's now. Oh, it's, I don't know if he actually has it. Let's have a look here. It doesn't look like I've got that one come through as of yet. So um, I'll have to wait and see what's actually happened there because it still says one nil. To Plymouth on my end, so hang tight a minute because I don't know whether that's how uh, how true that is at the moment. Well, well, it's uh, well, it says one all. Well, it says one all on my end, but either way, at both, but either way, at both venues, it is still very much game on. As uh, Mark Carrington now has the ball for Kidderminster, he tries to find um, Amari Morgan Smith, but collides with Kurt Zuma. And and uh, what did and uh, what did you make and what do you make of that incident? Yeah, it's a little bit of a collision there, um, and that goal has actually just come through now on my end. By the way, it's just obviously a little bit delayed. So Chelsea are back level against Plymouth um, in uh, the other game, but yeah, it was uh, it wasn't loads in that incident really. Um, so you can't really yeah, there's, there's not much to really say about it. Corner to Kidderminster now. Can they convert? Can they make it their second goal from this corner? It looks like they might, but they can't. And a and a and a poorly and a poorly timed corner, and uh, and and an interest and an interesting bit of uh, um, acrobatics from the Kidderminster from the Kidderminster number four, Nathan Cameron. Yeah, it was good. Uh, good from him there, obviously. Sometimes you you have to do that. You can't always play it uh, simply. Um, and obviously, he did very very well there, did Nathan Cameron. And uh, this, you know, him and uh, the likes of um, the other defenders there, Preston and, and Richards, and obviously Penny, are all standing, you know, very very firm and, and very very strong to the, to deal with everything that West Ham are throwing at them. Five minutes left. It's still Kidderminster 1, West Ham 0. You're listening to the Commentary Hub with me, Nicholas Jones, and Mike Harneman. Uh, you can you can also hear us on the Commentary Hub too, JDAC Football, JB Sports, uh, Storm FM, and you can also and you can also hear us um, on our you can also hear us on our official Twitch channel and also Mike and also Mike's channel, Miss O'Hani 1987. As um, as a kid, as a, as a kid amidst, uh, get ready to uh, to uh, take up a throw in, which they do, and it's still and uh, they were aim and uh, they were aiming for. I think he was aiming for uh, Ashley Hemmings, but uh, another flag, but uh, but uh, another flag for a throw in um, has has gone up as well. Russ Penn um, could just about could, could just about see a sliver of a smile on his face. Um, but um, he not, but he knows that this game is far from over, as do we. Ariola uh, picks up the ball for West Ham, and he passes up to to Issa Diop. Issa Diop now with the ball, he partly passes to Ryan Fredericks. Fredericks now passes to uh, to a crowd. Now back to uh, Diop, and now and now straight. To cut Zuma. Zuma tries to cross to Johnson, but blocked by Hemmings. As uh, 
as it's now a forward cross, was aiming for Yarmolenko, but um, but uh, West Ham holding their ground. And in fact, an offside, but Kidmiss holding their ground. Offside flag has gone up. It was against that. It was against that. It was against uh, that possible attempt on goal. I think Yarmolenko was a long way ahead. Was a long way ahead of the last defender. Your thoughts. Your thought. Your thoughts on the offside. Yeah, definitely offside for me as well. He was uh, certainly in an offside position there. Um, once again, very good defending from Kidderminster, who, you know, with every second that passes, are getting ever closer to being one 0 up at half time. Certain, cert, certainly, yes. As uh, Baj Rami um, had the ball, but dispossessed now by West Ham, and uh, and it looks like and it looked like a foul. Um, on Nikola Vlasic, I couldn't see. I couldn't see who fouled him. Um, it it was. It looked to me like it was Mark Carrington. What do you make of that? And... Yeah, I think it was uh, a, a foul there. Um, but these kids, uh, even the midfielders here, there, there's a lot of fight, a lot of uh, determination, and you know they're, they're battling very, very hard here um, and very, very well. Um, and, and kind of not giving West Ham too much on the ball um, when it comes to, you know, time on the ball and sort of, uh, sort of you know, West Ham obviously given an opportunity to get forward. Uh, Kinemitzer are always, you know, dealing with it pretty well at the moment. So they're playing very, very well, playing some good stuff for Kinemitzer as well on the other um, end of things as well, uh, creating chances and things like that too. Free kick briefly taken by, quickly taken by West Ham just a moment ago, but... Uh... But West Ham, no, 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 no but Kidderminster rising up to, but Kidderminster rising up to the challenge as uh, as they as they as they continue to hold on possession of the ball less around a minute and a half until half time. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they only put up at least a minute or two on. I'd be surprised if it was more. As Ariola. Yeah, probably a minute or, or maybe two, but yeah, probably a minute. I don't think there's been too many stoppages in this first half, really. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing too serious about this game. And as uh, Chelsea and Plymouth approach half time, it is still 1 1 at Stamford Bridge. As uh, West Ham now pass to uh, Alex Crowell. Crowell um, had it briefly. Now it's with uh, um, Ashley Hemmings. Ashley Hemmings with the ball for West Ham. Tries to find Sam Austin, but, uh, but uh, dispossessed very well by Nikola Vlasic. And now Alex Crowell. Crowell with the ball. And it's now gone to uh, I think that was uh, Ben Rama. Now back to Kral. Kral tries to find Kral tries to find Bone in the goal area. Now it's with Ryan Fredericks. Fredericks um, holds up, holding on to the ball, dip, dip, holding off any advances from Kidderminster. Now back now straight to Mark Noble. Noble does really well to as a hold. Does really well to hold on, and it's now gone to. Uh, I think that was uh, Ben Rama, and over it goes. It's over the crossbar. Whatever chances West Ham have, they are wasting them. Yeah, that was a very wayward effort there from Ben Rama. Obviously, he's what thirty yards, thirty-five yards out there, um, and he just seems to, you know, not really get any direction on that one at all. Um, and that's where Kinnamitz are playing so well, kind of, you know, forcing West Ham to have opportunities from long distance like that. Because when they get to the final third, the Kinemans of defence are really standing up to everything West Ham are throwing at them. One minute of one minute of added on time has been given. As uh, but uh, I don't but I don't think any but I don't think anything's going to be converted. Um, um, I'm in that time as as we have as I have seen so many times before. As uh, West Ham now um, have possession of the ball, uh, courtesy of a throw in, and it's now with. Uh, uh, Diop, Diop passes to Zuma. Zuma now with the ball for uh, West Ham, but it's now gone uh, up the field towards the midfielder. It's now aiming for, and it was aimed for uh, uh, Vlasic. And the referee looks like it will be getting ready to blow uh, the whistle for half time any time now. He does, and that is, and that is the end of the first half. Kidderminster have started as they meant to go on. Um, after their after their third round victory at Reading, could they be? Could they add? Will they add more in the second half, or will West Ham uh, reassert their reassert their league superiority? Half time score at Agra. Kidderminster Harriers one. West Ham United nil.
Thank you uh, for that, Nicholas, as well. Really uh, interesting game so far. Uh, we're going to take a quick break as well now. And uh, Kidderminster leading West Ham at Agro, as Nicholas just said there, by a goal to nil. Uh, certainly didn't expect this one to be going this way, but, you know, that's the, the magic of the FA Cup for you. And, of course, um, we said about uh, David Moyes being knocked out by Preston as a player where well, it looks like he could well be being knocked out by Kidderminster as a manager at the moment as well. Um, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with the second half. But in the meantime, we're going to just take a short interlude and uh, we'll be back in time, of course, for the second half. But uh, very great uh, cup tie so far. And let's see whether Kidderminster can continue on with the way that they played throughout that first half. Because at the moment, they're 1-0 up and good, uh, good value for it they are as well.
<coughs> so we are now back. We'll be back underway for second half coverage between Kidminster and West Ham United very, very shortly. Obviously, we've got Nicholas here still as well. Just going to uh, lower our little bit of uh, half time music as well there. So we'll, we'll turn it off, in fact. So. Um, Kidderminster there against West Ham. Kidderminster won they up at the break. Um, looking good value for it, aren't they, Nicholas, as well, right now? Yes, they, yes, they, yes, they certainly are. I mean, that's, uh, I mean, that goal in the first half by Alex, uh, that goal in the first half by Alex Penny, it was quite unexpected. And, uh, I'm looking at some of the comments, uh, recently. Um, uh, uh, Derek. Jones, my father, he says that David Moyes is going to have to give a pretty powerful half-time team talk. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he does. No, he's going to absolutely have to. Um, you know, would he even look to go to the substitutes bench, maybe? Obviously, he's got some players on there that can make a difference. Obviously, Declan Rice being one of those who's on the bench. Um, just going to look through what other options they've got here in regards to potential substitute options. West Ham as well. They've got a few other options that they could use, even... Uh, the likes of Socek as well, um, that could potentially come on, and also four nails, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I would have to go for some of the experienced players um, on there. Um, I do see a couple of academy players on there, um, um, Aji Elise and Armstrong Ocoflex. I personally don't think he should. I personally don't think he should bring them on because uh, their lack, of, because their lack of experience uh, could be very. Um, uh, could be very telling, but so, uh, but, but so coming back to uh, to Kidderminster's, if uh, Russell Pat, if Russ Penn is to make any um half time substitutes, um, he can't go wrong, he can't go wrong with the likes of uh, Jaden White and uh, Devon, uh, with uh, Jaden White. So, um, I reckon, I reckon that, I reckon that's, um, I reckon that's having someone like uh, Jaden White uh, would only, would only increase uh, Kidderminster's, um, would only increase Kidderminster's um, uh, um, attacking role, and uh, so um, so yeah. Um, just just go into that as well. I don't think Kidderminster will really be that fussed about making any substitutions at half time unless they've got any injuries. Uh, I think you know they should probably stick with the same eleven that's you know got them one nil up and playing as well as they are right now. I mean Amari Morgan Smith who took that I mean Amari I mean Amari Morgan Smith who took that foul in the first half. He seemed relatively okay throughout it. So um I don't think he so so I don't think he's gonna be replaced. I think he's just I think he's just gonna stay on there. Yeah, he's a very talented player as well. Obviously, it's surprised that he's obviously at this level of football. Um because for me he's, there's plenty about Amari Morgan Smith that you know, he could easily be a, a striker in the football league, you know, maybe league one, league two for me, the way that you know he's uh sort of, you know, um, able to, to get himself and his team goals and obviously getting, you know, uh, other teammates involved, etc. as well. Yeah, certainly. I mean, if I mean, certainly, I mean, and uh, um, should he progress even further um, in the FA Cup, I'm, I'm, I, I might just be tempting fate here, but um, but, um, he's cer but um, he's certainly racked up experience. He's played for the likes of Cheltenham Town, Oldham Athletic, uh, losing town and even won the 2016-17 FA Trophy during his time at York City, um, who Kidderminster also face um, regularly in the national in the national league in the national league North. Um, but uh, but um, but I'm uh, glad to, I'm glad you mentioned FA trophies because Kidderminster, of course, got to the first ever trophy final at the New Wembley, where um, they were uh, two 0 up and. You know, the fact you've mentioned the uh, FA trophies means I can mention that the Steam Ridge was a team that actually come back from 2-0 uh, down and beat them 3-2 on that occasion. So thanks for that, Nick. You kind of, uh, you know, helped me uh, put that one in there. So sorry, Kidderminster fans, but uh, obviously um, Steve Morrison was the, the difference on that occasion. Now manager of Cardiff, of course. Uh, passionate Borough fan there. Passionate. Absol absolutely, <laughs> mate, Absolutely. <laughs> and you can of and you can of course and, and you can of course and you can of course check out his interviews with uh, former Stevenage players um uh, on the um on the Storm FM YouTube channel as uh, we get ready for the as uh, the, as we get ready for the second half between Kidderminster and West Ham this is only a couple of minutes it is only a couple of minutes away now as um to as, see uh, the highlights here of the the first half between Plymouth and uh Chelsea, um, 
Still remains 1-1 one, one at the break, but that's a lovely little uh, back hill or back flick from uh, Cesar Aspi de Quetta that, that got Chelsea level. Um, good bit of play there from Chelsea to, to get their equaliser, although uh, obviously Plymouth were 1-0 up for a little bit of time in that game. And it looks like West Ham are getting themselves, looks like at least a double sub ready for the second half. Yeah, yeah, that superb opening goal, courtesy of uh, yes, um, that superb opening goal by Gillespie. That's um, that corner, that's a free kick was well taken, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a very good uh, free kick and a good goal for um, Plymouth Argyle as well, who, as uh, you know, as, as we know, are obviously a, a League One side. And Chelsea's last defeat in an FA Cup was against the League One side with Bradford, as I mentioned earlier on. Huh. How very, how very ironic should that be? How very ironic should that be repeated? We're now coming up to um, um, as we're now coming up to um, as Quetta's goal now, but um, but but in the lead up to it, uh, Plymouth uh, appeared to be defending really well against Chelsea. Yeah, they looked like they had a bit of opportunity there, Chelsea, to try and get themselves level. Um, and obviously, you know, West Ham are going to be looking to do the same here now against Kidderminster in the second half. Just had a look at uh, just had a look at Cesar Apilicueta's goal. That was well played by Chelsea. Yeah, it's a lovely little back heel sort of back flick, wasn't it? It was really nice. Yes, and uh, now back to now back to now back to Agra for the start of the second half. Craig Dawson looks like he's uh, come up. Looks like he's about to uh, come on as a substitute. As is Declan Rice. Uh, those two very experienced at Premier at Premier League level. David Moyes will be hoping he makes the. He has made the right decision as we approach as we approach the start of the second half between Kidamitsa Harriers and West Ham United. And in fact, Diop has gone off for Dawson and Crowell has gone off for Rice. So um so 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 a Dawson and Rice coming on as a substitute. We'll be asking Mike about them uh, momentarily as we prepare for the start of the second half. Kidderminster will be going from uh, right to left this time. I mean, I mean, left to right and uh, West Ham right to left. And we are underway for the second half between Kidderminster Harriers and West Ham United. Uh, ball played in early by by West by Kidderminster, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and a throw has been taken by uh, by Kidderminster. It's now with Sam Austin. Austin now with the ball heads. Tries to find it into the uh, goal, but uh, headed away by Kurt Zuma. I was just going to ask Mike um, Dawson and Rice um, on the on, on the pitch of substitutes. Would that um, is that a good decision? I think it is personally. I think obviously Declan Rice, um, very experienced, had a exceptional Euros, didn't he, with England? When of course England got through to the final and were beaten by Italy. Um, obviously, uh, really talented uh, player. Um, obviously, you know, vice captain at West Ham as well. And obviously, we know uh, Dawson's very experienced as well. So, I think it's a good call from David Moyes to put those two on. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mike. As uh, Amari Morgan Smith um, uh, sends the ball out for a West Ham uh, uh, for a West Ham throw. It looks as though Kidderminster have started as the have started the second half the way they started the first. The more aggressive as Amari Morgan Smith. Um, has the ball for for the Reds, and it's now gone to I think that I I couldn't see who it was, but so uh, West Ham now have it back, and a foul has been going on. It's taken out a West Ham player and two Kidderminster players. I couldn't see um, who, who who they were in total. I think Amari Sterling was involved. Um, we'll just uh, we'll just have to check. But uh, what do you think happened? Um, yeah, it was just a bit of a collision. Really, there's nothing really. Uh, excuse me, in, in regards to you know more than just a free kick, no uh, yellows or anything like that. Um, Needs to be brandished with that one. And uh, I think I actually just missed it. Um, and and a, t- a, a small attempt on goal by Ashley Hemmings just went past the post there. Yeah, it was a good effort from um, Ashley Hemmings. Is you know long distance. He's quite a bit of a way out, but uh, why not? You know, obviously you're playing against. Um, a Premier League side here in West Ham, you know, you want to become a hero. Imagine if you did it from that kind of range, that would make it even more special, wouldn't it? Yeah, so, you know, it certainly would have been. But as it stands at the moment, Kidderminster lead West Ham by a goal to nil. Are on the, and you're listening to the commentary hub with me, Nicholas Jones, and Mike Harneman as Ben Johnson 
Now I'll pass it back to uh, Kurt Zuma. You, you can hear us on the Commentary Hub too. Uh, JDAC Football, JB Sports, Storm FM, the Commentary Hub too, and also on our Twitch channel, and also on Mike's, and also on Mike's uh, Twitch channel as well. Um, as uh, West, as uh, Alex Penny was um, involved in an incident with um, uh, Ben Johnson, I think it was. You can also get in touch with us uh, on Twitter at the Commentary Live One, com uh, capital C uh, for Commentary, capital L Live. Uh, number one, and also on Facebook at the com, and also on Facebook at facebook.com stroke the commentary hub as Luke Simpson clears the ball out of the goal. Uh, it's uh, the, um, our Facebook is facebook.com slash the capital T, the slash the capital C commentary, and the capital C and the, and the capital H for hub, all one word. As a, as a West Ham player appears to have been brought down, it was Yarmolenko, but so um, he appears to be all right. That's good. That's good to see. As Mark Noble has, a, or is he? Uh, Yarmolenko um, seems to be uh, stretching himself out a bit there. As yeah, uh, I don't think there's really um, anything there that's too wrong with the West Ham man. I think he'll be okay to carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was slightly concerned for a moment there as Vlasic passes to Ben Rama. Ben Rama going for goal, but. Uh, Defect deflected really well by Alex Penny, although Kidderminster aren't out of the woods yet. Here's Declan Rice with his first touch of the ball. Rice now passes to Mark Noble. Noble finds I th Noble finds I think that's uh, Johnson, but uh, as he's trying to go around, he's trying to go around uh, Caleb Richards, but crossed into uh, the goal area and uh, deflected out by. By Kidderminster, and it's now with their captain Sam Austin, who passes to Ashley Hemmings. Hemmings passes down to uh, to uh, Nathan Cameron. Cameron now passes to uh, to somebody else, and it's now gone to um, Amari Morgan Smith, who's been clipped by Craig Dawson. Uh, 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 um, uh, he looks momentarily stunned, but. Um, but so, uh, what do you but uh, but what do you make of it? Yeah, again, good build-up play from Kidderminster. Harry was there, and uh, West Ham, you know, obviously having to make the foul really to to stop Kidderminster from um, getting into a, an even more dangerous position. So uh, credit to Kidderminster for the way that they've come out in the second half as well. West Ham obviously have made the subs, but Kidderminster, uh, you know, uh, are doing everything that they can still to uh, keep this game at one 0 and. Um, you know, allowing West Ham to have a bit of possession at times as well, but uh, sort of saying to West Ham, you know, we're we're one nil up at the moment, and you know, we we beat uh, obviously a higher division team last time out in red, and we can obviously um, potentially do it and, and maybe do it again here as well. Okay, now Kidderminster heading up with the ball upfield, and I think that was Sam Austin who had it briefly. Indeed, it was Rice was able to intercept, and it's now with Ryan Fredericks. Fredericks. Um, crosses upfield and was deflected by um, deflected by I think that might have been uh, Yarmolenko uh, or was it Dawson? It's now uh, Sam Austin again for Kidderminster. It's now gone to um, I think that's uh, Hemmings now back to Austin. Austin finds uh, Bajrami, but Declan Rice gets there before he does, and it's now with um, uh, Gerard Bowen or Bowen has uh, briefly been fouled by I think I, I couldn't see who it was, but uh, West Ham still managed to hold on to the ball. And it's now gone to um Ben Johnson who passes to say Ben Rama. Ben Rama to Noble. Noble passes to um tr trying to pass to uh, Rice, which he did, and Rice is now trying to uh, uh find a way to break through. It's now with Johnson. Johnson uh uh, truck was almost tackled by Hemmings, and it's now back with Noble. Noble to Declan Rice. Declan Rice back, back now with the ball. It's now gone straight to Noble. Noble passes to uh, Ben Rama, and it's now gone to uh, Johnson. Now back to Declan Rice. Declan Rice trying to find a way through. He try. He goes round Sam Austin and passes to Vlasic. Vlasic back towards Ben Rama and just over the cross, almost over the crossbar, but uh, Kidderminster. Uh, doing really well to uh, to defend that one. That was very close, and a foul by uh, Zuma on. Uh, I think that was uh, Morgan Smith, but um, that's excellent that was... defending, by the way, from from Nathan Cameron. There, getting a block on that one. Uh, 
to deny West Ham from obviously potentially scoring there uh, to make it 1-1. Nathan Cameron had a defender very, very well played. Yes, very well played. I think very well played. I think that was an attempt by um, either Ben Rama or Vlasic. But um, but so the fight between uh, Zuma and uh, Morgan Smith has been quickly diffused there by uh, uh, by the referee Jonathan Moss. Do you think he's uh, made good refereeing so far in this game? Yeah, he's not had anything really to do um, in too much as of yet. But uh, yeah, no no issues with the way he's uh, refereed this game so far. Still one all, still one all between between Chelsea and Plymouth as their second half is now well underway. As uh, Alex Penny takes the throw for uh, for Kidderminster, but out it goes for what a, for what I think will be a Kidderminster Harriers corner. Something must have happened, and uh, and the Kidderminster Harriers fans they they're they're get, they're, they're, they're they're getting really excited about how this game is going so far, and indeed it will be. A Kidderminster Harriers corner to be taken by Alex Penny, the man who scored in the first half. Will any will he or any other play, will he or any other of the Harriers players get on the score sheet? We shall see. He takes the corner, almost headed in by I think that was uh, almost headed in by I think that was um, uh, Preston. I will I'll, I'll have to check. I think it and, was. It was the, the corner was right to his head as well. It was a perfectly placed corner, um, and actually, you know, maybe Kidderminster uh, might be looking to, um, let me see, might be looking on with a little bit of frustration there because the the delivery straight to the man, and you know, to be honest, um, just couldn't direct his header. Obviously, all he could do was direct it over the top of the crossbar. But it's a good uh, passage of play from Kidderminster again there, and an opportunity to make it too. Ashley Hemmings passes to uh, uh, Morgan Smith, but um, but uh, but so still can't get through on got but but still can't get through to the goal. And uh, like you say, it was uh, and like you say, it was a def- and like you say, Kidderminster are definitely becoming a bit are starting to become more frustrated. I think that was actually Sterling who almost who om- who om- who almost put, who almost put that one in. Come uh, fifty five minutes gone still. 55 minutes gone, Kidderminster one, West Ham nil. Uh, West Ham, they're proving to be more, they're proving to be more of a tougher opposition than Reading were in the third round. But Kidderminster um, are still, but Kidderminster are, are, are still proving themselves a formidable opponent, aren't they? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Russ Penn will be uh, absolutely delighted, really, with his first what 55 minutes or so. Um, and the way that his kid has decided to play, and they're playing some really good football. When uh, you know, as, as we said, there's 130 or 131 places between them, um, and a matter of divisions as well. I think it's something like five divisions, isn't it? Something like that, uh, five or six divisions. Anyway, I'm not not 100 sure, but um, it's not looking like that right now at all uh, in regards to the way that this game is going. What would you say? What would you say? Um, how would you? How? What would you say is different between uh, West Ham and Reading? Um, I don't really know. Obviously, West Ham are, 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 are sort of more of a experienced side of so they're very um, sort of you know experienced when it comes to games like this. They've obviously had games like this in the past against lower division teams in the cup, which they've obviously gone on and won. Um, but no, I, I don't know. There's, there's not loads and loads. Obviously, just a, a one division difference as well, um, which I, I suppose might be, and you know the. The, the factor in it, obviously, West Ham being a, a Premier League side and uh, a good Premier League side at that as well. We're obviously fighting very hard to, to get into Europe, as you said earlier. Yes, yes, absolutely. And uh, I, and uh, I did actually check. It's actually 113 league positions and five divisions. Five as, divisions uh, and, and 113. OK, I'll remember that for next time. Thank you. Yeah, as uh, Alex Penny takes the throw in for Kidderminster, and it's now with uh, Mark Carrington. Carrington um, sends it out for yet another for what looks to be yet another throw in, as um, as uh, as uh, as Kidderminster still lead by by a goal to nil. It's in fact going to be a West Ham throw, and Ben Johnson throws to uh, Kurt Zuma, and it's now gone towards uh, the uh, goalkeeper um, Ariola. And Kidderminster, oh, yeah. just just looking here as well at the moment. Obviously, West Ham are trying to get more of a, a front foot on the game now, and uh, but Kidderminster has set up very very well. You can see that they've got you know a couple of banks of four there, 
And then when they're attacking, they're attacking with sort of three um, as well. So or, or it might even be four as well that they're attacking with. So, um, you know, the way that they're set up, they're, they're set up to kind of close West Ham down um, and stop West Ham from getting any real clear-cut chances at goal. But at the same time, when they're on the attacking uh, sort of trajectory of the game, they're, they're really going for it, which is nice to see. Corner for West Ham taken by Ben Rami, and it's now with Rice. Rice dancing around, Rice dancing around Carrington, but Kidderminster holding holding their advances off very well indeed. Um, um, another another waste another wasted corner effort by West Ham, me thinks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kidderminster defending it very well. West Ham. Maybe even uh, just, you know, the more that the time's going down, obviously it's favouring Kidderminster, isn't it? So West Ham are um, getting a bit more sloppy because they're, you know, trying to be uh, a bit more urgent in regards to the way that they're playing this game now. Yeah, certainly it's now Declan Rice. He crosses upfield. He tries to find, he, he tried to find, I think that was um, uh, Yarmolenko, but it's now been picked up by Carrington. Carrington. Uh, for for Kidderminster, so now gone straight to uh, Luke Simpson. Now Luke Simpson manages to clear it, but um, it's out for a throw, and it'll be taken by Craig Dawson. Craig Daw Craig Craig Daw Craig Dawson. He's had Premier League experience with the likes of um, West Bromwich Albion and Watford. Only joined West Ham in 2020, but um, but uh, but that experience. But that experience may well count for nothing in this game as Johnson manages to cross, but is picked up by uh, uh, somebody deflected by Kidderminster and it's now ball with Johnson. Johnson with the ball again for West Ham. He passes to uh, Kurt Zuma. I thought he was going to go to Declan Rice, but Zuma now has it. The French international streaking up the field, passes to Johnson. Johnson. Passes back towards uh, Saeed Ben Rama, the Algerian international, um, uh, featured in a couple of uh, qualifying matches for Algeria um, in the World Cup qualifying campaign. And it's now with Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko, the big Ukrainian who passes again, but uh, deflected by Luke Simpson. An attempt on goal was deflected by Luke Simpson. I couldn't pick up who I couldn't pick up who tried to score. But um, that was a very close run thing, wasn't it, Mike? Yeah, very good save actually from uh, Luke Simpson as well. He's not really had much to do in this game yet, but just shows that he's uh, alert and to the uh, to alert to the danger when he needs to be. And uh, when West Ham are you know trying to get themselves the, the equaliser now, um, Luke Simpson, you know, just saying you're not going to get past me that easily. Uh, very good save from him. Yeah, just managed to catch the play. It was Gerard Bowen. He must be disappointed with that effort. As a corner bit, as a corner kick has been given to West Ham, was uh, sent in by uh, Jarrod Bowen, but it's now been picked up by Ben Rama. Ben Rama now with the ball for West Ham. Can he convert it into anything? And the answer is no. That's right. Again, another opportunity there for West Ham. Uh, really trying to get themselves level now. They're, they're trying to throw everything at this kingdom of the side. But as we said in the first half, they're continuing to stay uh, strong and stay firm to it as well right now. Um, as uh, I think West Ham are going to be getting another substitution ready shortly as well, uh, which will be their third. We'll let you know who it is. We'll let you know who it is as and when it happens. It's now Ryan Fredericks uh, with the ball for uh, with the ball for the Hammers. Now back to Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko uh, trying to go through, tr trying to go through Kidderminster, but 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 nothing doing so far. Ben Rama tries to find Ryan Fredericks, but nothing comes of it though. Declan Rice. I'm hearing it will probably be two substitutions, in fact, for West Ham. It looks like they're going to be getting uh, the third and fourth subs ready to come on. We'll confirm as and when it happens. As a, as a shot on goal deflected by Luke Simpson. Luke Simpson, he's really he's really doing well at keeping the ball out, isn't he? Yeah, he's doing well uh, in the last few minutes. Obviously, the first half, he didn't have a lot to do at all or anything to do. But the last few minutes, uh, West Ham have had a couple of chances there and he stood tall to them and stood firm to them. Yeah, he's doing uh, everything he needs to do as a goalkeeper right now. Two minutes past the two minutes past the hour mark. It's still Kidderminster 1, West Ham United 0. And uh, just and just going for a quick check between Chelsea and Plymouth. It is still one all between both sides as Morgan Smith um, uh, was actually fouled. I mean, an incident in the goal area. He has since uh, got back up, which is good. 
as as uh, as uh, Aaron Cresswell uh, comes off. Uh, I mean, on, I mean, yeah. comes on in place yeah. of Johnson. That's right, and I think uh, it's so checked there as well. I think it's also coming on, isn't he? Yeah, it looks. Yeah, yeah, it looks like um, uh, Thomas Suchek off in place of Mark Noble. Thomas Suchek, who led the Czech Republic um, uh, to to the quarterfinals um, in the re- in the recent Euros, but um, but um, but uh, but um, but uh, but but could not but could not get past Denmark, who went on to uh, become semi-finalist. Suchek with the ball, his first touch of the game. And it's now gone to Kurt Zuma. Zuma now with the ball for for West Ham. Just looking and at those two uh, substitutions there as well. Um, two, you know, more very uh, experienced players that have been put on for West Ham there. Thomas Suchek and Aaron Creswell, both um, internationals and both players that, you know, are regulars in uh, West Ham's league campaign, uh, sort of match day squads and, you know, lineups as well. Yeah, hold your horses a minute there, Mike, because um, Nikola Vlasic um, um, a, a appeared to appeared to foul a kid of Mr. Harrier's player. I think the referee gave him a bit of a talking to, but no card, uh, but no cards given as a free kick has now been given to Kidderminster. Um, it'll be interesting to see what it'll be interesting to see if they can convert anything from this free kick. So far back, the free kick taken. It's gone to Alex Penny, but um, but uh, but it was uh, but it was deflected, and it looks like it will be a Harrier's corner. That's right. Good play from Kidderminster once again, and uh, looking to add to this lead now um, against uh, a West Ham side that you know uh, trying to throw everything at Kidderminster now, as we were just saying with regards to those substitutes as well, uh, bringing on players who play regularly for them in the Premier League. Um, no, uh, corner corner wasn't a uh, corner wasn't apparently given. If it was, we didn't see it. No, as a Zuma, kick, yeah. As a Zuma now has the ball. He passes to Suchak and now Mark and uh, now Craig Dawson, Dawson, Dawson now Dawson now back with the ball. I think Rice was trying to signal it uh, um, for him for him, for, him, for him to pass it to him, and it's now with um, uh, Aaron Cresswell Cresswell to Ben Rama Ben Rama. Passes back towards Dawson, but caught by. Um, but that's a poor pass. It's now with uh, Kidderminster. With uh, I think that was uh, Sterling. Although Morgan Smith could have gotten could have gotten his foot to it had he not got had he not got stuck in a bit of turf. Um, but uh, but uh, but uh, but uh, but, uh, but uh, West Ham. Um, uh, given the play, given what they're playing so far, are they really starting to run out of options after just over sixty five and a half minutes? Uh, they've only got the one substitute left, uh, which I'm sure will probably be, you know, maybe um, for now as if, you know, the score doesn't change with the players that they've got on the pitch now. But, yeah, they're, they're trying to throw everything at this uh, Kidderminster side. And, you know, I think David Moyes has obviously looked at this and said, well, uh, some of the players who he's decided to start the, the game with, obviously, were underperforming, which is why he's made four changes already. And we're still got about 25 minutes left uh, and they've only got the one change left they can make now. Cresswell passes to uh, Kurt Zuma. Zuma has now picked, has, has now passed to uh, Rice. Rice trying to go round, um, Rice trying to go round Sam Austin, but, uh, but nothing doing so far. Rice. Now Zuma. Zuma. He's trying to run. He's trying to run through, but it's now passed to Aaron Cresswell. Cresswell uh, gets into a bit of a gets into a bit of a um, uh, wrestling match there with um, with uh, Ashley Hemming. So I think he pulled on his shirt there. But um, but uh, but uh, but but Jonathan Moss. Um, but Jonathan Moss uh, doesn't. But Jonathan Moss doesn't doesn't take anything of it. No, I don't think there was a real lot in that one until I think Jonathan Moss has probably just about got that one correct. Yeah, it see, yeah, it seems to have uh, been guessing that one correct. It looks as though the Kidderminster supporters are becoming a lot more noisier than their West Ham counterparts as Luke Simpson gets ready to uh, kick the ball out of the goal area, which he does. Yeah, they, uh, he... The, I think the reason behind the Kidderminster fans getting a lot more noisy there is because obviously it's getting ever closer to um, the end of this game now. And uh, the more time that passes, the more that the 
Kidderminster fans in the stadium here are saying, well, why not? It could be our day. Offside, offside being given against West Ham. I, I mean, Kidderminster are very unlucky, but back to but back to where we are now. And it's Rice um, uh, uh, with the ball for West Ham. Rice passes to Hemmings. Hemmings now back towards Rice. Declan Rice with the ball. He's... He's he's uh, powering up through. He's powering up the pitch, and he's now passed to to uh, Thomas Suchek. Suchek passes to I think that's uh, uh, to, I think that was uh, um, uh, uh, Fredericks or whoever. Uh, but so now it's been that's now back with Dawson. Almost picked up by Morgan Smith, which it is. Morgan Smith almost sends it out for a throw, but keeps the ball in play. Morgan Smith. For Kidderminster, and it's now with Baj Rami and now Sam Austin. Austin holds up. Austin, great ball control. He passes to Hemmings. Hemmings, Harriers' top scorer so far this season. Surely he must get his name on the sheets. Hemmings passes back towards Baj Rami, as Mike mentioned, a former Albanian under 21. But um, but it's but now Kurt Zuma has the ball for. Uh, for West Ham, not for long though. It's now back with Hemmings who passes to Baj Rami. Baj Rami for Kidderminster. And now it's with uh, Mark Carrington. Carrington passes to, I think that was um, uh, Caleb Richards. But uh, but West Ham, but, uh, but Kidderminster, they've had, but Kidderminster controlling the game uh, really well. But even though they don't have the ball right now from Ryan Fredericks, Kidderminster. Kidderminster, superb ball control. Yeah, playing very, very well with Kidderminster right now, especially uh, when they're in possession. Um, they're uh, looking very, very good. And it's getting towards that stage where maybe Kidderminster will be looking to make a substitution uh, of their own shortly as well, um, just to kind of give somebody else uh, an opportunity to come on and, you know, see what they can do against this West Ham side. Ashley Hermings almost... Ha Ashley Hermings looked like he was going to go... Um, uh, uh, go towards goal, but uh, West Ham uh, doing really well too. But but West Ham did really well to uh, to uh, keep that effort out, and it's still one all between Chelsea and Plymouth. So it looks like it could well go to extra time. So it looks like it could well go to extra time of penalties between uh, the Pilgrims and the Blues as Morgan Smith um, has managed to carry the ball into the 18-yard box, but passes back uh, down the field to. Uh, uh, to uh, to one of his teammates, I think that might have been Hemmings, but um, but uh, but now it's Yarmolenko. He holds onto the ball, but slips up. Um, I think he, I think, I think the pressure might have, I think the pressure might have gotten to him there. But so uh, a yellow card has been issued. I couldn't see, I couldn't see who it was for. It might, it might be one of the Kidderminster players. It yeah, it went to uh, the defender um, Nathan Cameron. In fact, yes, indeed, it was Nathan Cameron. He's been booked. Um, but um, but um, if he is, to, but if he is, to, but if he is to commit another offence and be sent off, that will be a real shame because he's been one of the key defenders throughout this game. Yeah, he got an assist, obviously, for the goal as well. Yeah. And Mark Carrington uh, moves off the pitch to make way for Lewis Montrose. Lewis Mo Lewis Montrose. Um, very experienced at league level. He won the twenty third. He won the twelve thirteen League Two season during his time at Gillingham, and he's also played for the likes of Wickham Wanderers, Chesterfield, and Oxford United. Yeah, so he good experience. Won the good experience there for uh, the man coming on, which I think uh, is a good sort of wise move from Russ Penn there. Yeah, I also I was also about to mention that uh, he also won the eighteen nineteen uh, FA Trophy with AFC Fylde. Who are also who who are also in the National League North and actually the National League North leaders. So um he knows so um he knows how to win silverware at non-league level. Meantime, uh, meantime Blasic with the ball for West Ham and and I think he's about to send it out. But um, West Ham still managing to hold but West Ham still managing to hold on to the ball. It's now with Ryan Fredericks. Ryan Fredericks tries to find Jarrod Bowen. But um, one of the but one of the uh, play, but one, but uh, Nathan Cameron does well to get in the way there, as uh, West Ham still trying to get still trying to get through. It's now with it's now Thomas Suchek, the Czech international, straight to Declan Rice, who, as Mike mentioned, was part of the England squad that reached the Euro twenty twenty final. Uh, Said Ben Rama, Ben Rama now 
Back towards Thomas Suchak. Suchak finds Ryan Fredericks. Fredericks tries to find somebody in the goal area, but headed away by Kidderminster Harriers. It's now with Craig Dawson. Good defending Kidderminster there as well, just in that passage of play. Defended that one very well then. Rice. Rice now, Rice now with the ball. And it uh, looked like it was uh, going towards uh, Yarmolenko. But uh, again, good defending by Kidder, Mr. Harriers and Ashley Hummings, although it's, although it's now resulted in a throw-in to West Ham to be taken by Cresswell. It's now with Rice. Rice for the Hammers, straight back to Cresswell. Cresswell to, I think that might, to, I uh, think, so I couldn't see who it was. It might well have been Ben Rama. In fact, it was as um, Dawson now has the ball. He passes to um, Suchek. Suchek. Suchek tries to find Rice, which he does. Rice passes to Cresswell. Cresswell trying to go around uh, Hemmings, but um, he passes. But um, he passes to uh, Ben Rama. Rice. I mean, back to Rice. Rice. He's trying to he's trying to get through, but can't. Now it's up to Ben Rama. What can he do? He crosses into the goal. He tries to find Yarmolenko, but but another but yes, another attempt on goal just goes the wrong way for West Ham. Yeah, just looking at this uh, as well just now. Obviously, Kinnamitz are flying high in uh, the the um, National League North, as you said, sitting third, and West Ham. But they've lost the last two games, so. So they lost to Manchester United and they also lost to uh, Leeds United as well, did the hammer. So, you know, maybe that's um, something that Russ Penn and his side could, you know, potentially look at now, um, if, you know, because obviously they're only, what, just over 15 minutes away from putting themselves in the hat for round five uh, against this side, obviously, who are sitting fifth in the Premier League at the moment. Yes, yes, certainly. I mean, Yes, certainly. Amari Sterling with the ball for Kidderminster, but uh, but it goes out for a throw in to be taken by West Ham, which indeed it has. West Ham, West Ham need to pull some. West Ham need to pull something out of the bag and fast. They've only got they've only got just under fifteen minutes left. Time is running out, and they time is running out, and they know it. Ben Rama tries to. Ben Rama tries to get round the Kidderminster defenders. He can't quite do it. He passes to Rice. Rice tries to go for it, and well blocked by well blocked by Kidderminster, which results in the ball going up, going over the crossbar. Great defending by the Carpetman. Yeah, defending very very well once again. Our uh, Kidderminster uh, or the Carpetman, as you call them, there uh, defending very very well at the moment and keeping this West Ham side at bay. Um, not long left for, for them to hold out. And their fans, as you, you can see there, uh, are absolutely loving this as well. Um, they're, uh, you know, on the verge of what could be a, a very huge um, FA Cup upset. Yes, certainly. As uh, the Kidderminster fans getting behind, as the Kidderminster fans now getting behind their club, they're making, they're making just so much noise as Luke Simpson clears it out. And it's now with uh, Amar, and it's now with. I think that was uh, Hemmings. Now it's gone to. Um, I, I, I couldn't see who it was. It's actually Hemmings. It's actually Hemmings himself. But, um, but, uh, but, but deflected out by um, by uh, Creswell. Good play there again from uh, Kidderminster. Just trying to get themselves that second goal, and obviously. Um, even if they don't get a second goal, as long as the ball's in West Ham's uh, half of the pitch, and that's uh, you know good enough for them right now. Yes, uh, yes, certainly. Yes, certainly. Keller Minster could be well on the way to. Uh, anyway, uh, and as I was before, I was about to mention this. Uh, Vlasic makes way for Pablo Fornals, the Spain international, and Keller Minster are also about to make a substitution as well. Sam Austin is going to come off. And uh, is going to come off, and taking his place will be Dev will be Devonte will be Devonte Redmond. Devonte Redmond um, on loan from on loan from Wrexham, as I mentioned earlier, was also also played for Manchester United at Premier League Two level, and he's 
and uh, and if what and if he manages to promote and if he manages to promote Killer Mr. Harris, this will be the second time he's done it in his. This will only be the second time he's promoted a club in his career. He also promoted Salford City from the National League to League Two um, in right. the eighteen he, uh, nineteen season. So he's got a good promotion the, record. Yeah, he played. A little, I think he played a little bit for Salford in League Two as well. Uh, the season after that, I believe. So. Um, good player there. Another player that obviously is playing a few leagues below maybe where they should be playing in terms of their career at the moment. Yeah, certainly. But um, yes, but certainly, yes, certainly. But it just goes to show that uh, playing for a non league club can bring its rewards as Hemmings um, has the ball, but passes to, uh, to Morgan Smith. Morgan Smith back to Hemmings. Um, but, and uh, now picks up by Suchek. Suchek sends the ball out for a throw and. Uh, and, and as I was just saying a moment ago, it doesn't all have to be about big league clubs to be successful. No, that's why we love the FA Cup as well. And these upsets, of course, uh, when when teams, obviously, you know, you mentioned Lincoln City getting to the uh, quarterfinal. Obviously, Sutton were successful in that tournament as well and were knocked out in the round before the quarterfinal. And, you know, you see upsets pretty much every season, which is always uh, the... You know, um, the joy that we, we you know, and the, the fact that that's why we love the FA Cup, really, isn't it, as well, to see um, all of these lower league sides giving a, a very good account of themselves as Kidderminster are today. Certainly, certainly so. And it's still one all between, and it's still one all between Chelsea and Plymouth. So, so it will, so it looks as though, it w so it looks as though those two will be going to, uh, to extra time and penalties as Yarmolenko now has the ball for for West Ham. It's now with Ben Rama. Deflected by Kidderminster, and but it's gone back to Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko trying to go through, trying to go around, but uh, I think that. Was, uh, but I think um, another uh, West Ham player was trying to go for it, but some um, he couldn't. But he couldn't send it through. It's still one nil as uh, Creswell passes to Ben Rama. Ben Rama, what can he do? He passes straight back to uh, Yarmolenko. Yarmolenko trying to uh, trying to. Trying to power his way through, but can't. Rice now back to uh, Cresswell. That Cresswell. other substitution just a minute ago for West Ham, by the way, was their final substitution of the game. So David Moyes has um, used all the eggs that he can use now. That's right. That, that's right. And they're running. That's right. And they're running out of options as Cresswell throws the ball into a Declan Rice who slips up, uh, who slips up momentarily by by just sending the ball out of the field. But it's now gone back to a throw in. And Declan Rice tries to as crossed to um, I I could I couldn't see who it was, but um, but uh, West Ham, but uh, Kidderminster defend, but Kidderminster defending really but but Kidderminster defending really well indeed. What must be going through Russ Penn's mind now? Yeah, well, uh, he's getting ever closer, isn't he? And his Kidderminster players are getting ever closer to causing that upset now um, against a, a Premier League side, obviously in West Ham, who are fighting for Europe and. Um, these Kidderminster fans, and you know they're absolutely loving it. The manager, I'm sure, is loving it. The chairman's probably loving it. Um, and I think uh, you know it's, it's a why we love the FA Cup. 150 years of it this year, and uh, this is you know if this goes, if this uh, ends up as a victory for Kidderminster, it's probably going to be one of the biggest upsets of those 150 years as well. Yeah, say yeah, say briefly by uh, say briefly, but I think that was. Uh... Saved briefly by Simpson. I think that was um, I think I think that was a foul on uh, on uh, Yarmolenko. I um, a, a briefly put, briefly tugged on the shirt by uh, by uh, by Nathan Cameron. Um, whether he 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 it looks as though he was it looks as though he was definitely um, in the goal area, but nothing worthy of a penalty. Um, not for me. I think he went down a little bit too easily there. Um, and I yes. Think, uh... Yes, yeah, it did I, look I like think, it, didn't it? I don't think there was anything really in that one at all. I think he's get, it's getting to that stage for West Ham where they're obviously now kind of uh, just trying everything they can to to give themselves a bit of hope in this game. Well, that hope could well soon be da well that hope could well soon be dashed as a corner has been given to Harriers. It'll be Amari Sterling to take the corner for Kidderminster. Everyone getting into their positions. Sterling raises his hand to signal that he's ready. Um, or, or is he? I think he just wants to make sure that um, that the ball is in the correct position. Um, Jonathan Moss uh, blows the whistle to signal that the corner uh, is to be taken. And indeed it is deflected really well by 
Alfonso Ariola. I think that's I think that's probably the I think that's probably the best thing he's done all game. Yeah, he's not had loads to do in regards to uh, other saves he's made and things like that. But that was a bit better from him. Um, obviously, you know you can look at his positioning for the for the goal as well. Obviously, he uh, dropped the the ball for the goal, um, or he wasn't able to kind of get the ball. Uh, Firmly in his, in between his gloves for the goal, and then kind of just gifted it straight to the Kidderminster player uh, Penny, who put it into the back of the net. But um, you know, it's uh, that I suppose that's what happens when you're you know not the out and out um, outright number one, isn't it? Yeah, talking. Yeah, talk. Yeah, talking. Yeah, talking of Alex Penny, it could well be it could well be another Kidderminster corner, or is it? No, in fact, it's going to be another throw. And we've just we've just under with just about seven minutes left. It's still Kidderminster one, West Ham nil. And you're listening to the commentary hub with myself, Nicholas Jones, and Mike Harneman. You can also hear us on the commentary hub too. JDAC Football, uh, JD Sports, Storm FM, and you can also uh, watch us on on our Twitch channel and also Mike's Twitch channel. And it is and uh, and right at this moment in time, it is also still. One all between Chelsea and Plymouth with five minutes of normal time round their side left. As uh, I wonder, uh, sorry, man, I wonder what Lee Chapman is uh, is making of this right now. Obviously, the man who scored uh, the last time that these two sides met in uh, 1994 there as well. Um, he scored the winner in a one nil victory for West Ham that day. Uh, so I wonder what you know what he's making of this game now. The former. West Ham man, um, who you know uh, was the difference on that day. Yes, it's a yes, it's yes, um, yes. It certainly it certainly looks like one. He'll it certainly looks like one. He probably won't want to watch um, again. But um, with but well, with only six minutes left, it but with only six minutes left, it might change his tune. It might not. We shall see. As Ben Rama now has the ball just outside the eighteen yard box, he passes to Thomas Suchek. Suchek fires it in. To the goal area, but but headed but cleared away by Kidderminster, and it's now gone to Jarrod Bowen. Jarrod Bowen tries to take it, but um, has been fouled, I think, by Caleb Richards. Yes, yeah, uh, a definite foul in there for me. Um, but Kidderminster again, you know, sometimes making those fouls, you, you know, uh, and kind of stopping West Ham from really trying to play their game, it isn't a bad thing at this stage of the game either. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't look like it. I mean, David Moyes trying to encourage uh, West Ham as much as he can, but I think, but but I think deep down, part of him, but I think deep down, part of him realizes that um, he's prob that uh, the team has probably shot all their bolts, so it could well be all over for them. Five minutes left, though, for 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 West Ham to uh, to to uh, to try and at least um, to try and at least level uh, rather than uh, rather than go ahead, because if they because I because I'm now starting to feel that if they level this game, that could well give them the hope that they need. Um, I don't think they'll be able to as it gets in front within the next five minutes. But if they level, that could still uh, keep their hopes alive. Yeah, absolutely. And if they do level, and they take into extra time as well, don't they? So um, they do indeed. But uh, so, an, they an do indeed. Sorry to yeah. win, they do indeed. Sorry to interrupt an attempt on a goal by uh, West Ham. I think that was uh, I think that was Sterling who almost had it, but. Um, but um, no, it wasn't. It was in fact Ashley Hemmings who 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 who, um, who almost put that one in. But um, unlucky, unlucky for it not to be two. Yeah, I was just going to say that an opportunity for Kidderminster through Ashley Hemmings and uh, good opportunity that it was as well. Um, and that's where you know West Ham are going to have to go for this now. So that could be where Kidderminster can get their second goal because obviously if they can defend um, as well as they have done in the eighty-five minutes or eighty-six minutes so far. They might even be able to hit West Ham on the counter and then double their lead that way. West Ham, ha West Ham have got to go for broke now as Rice passes to Ben Rama. Ben Rama now with the ball. He tries to power it through. Can't quite do it. It's now with Ben Rama. Saved by Simpson. Luke Simpson has saved it. He has just been superlative in front of goal. Yeah, fantastic save again from Luke Simpson. Didn't have a lot to do in the first half, as I said earlier. But now, um, when he needs to pull up all the stops for uh, his kid and Mr. Harrier's side, he's doing everything he can to keep this at 1-0 at the moment. 
it's that time. It's that time of the ma It's that time of the match where we are, where we start to, where we now start to find out who our player of the match is. Sponsored by Commentary Services, Mike. Who is your pick? I've got a name in mind already, and uh, I'm going to have to give it to Alex Penny, the man whose goal is the difference, the uh, Kidderminster defender there. So uh, Penny for me is going to get player of the match for the way he's defended in this game, and also at the moment it looks like he's going to be uh, a hero as well. So. Um, congratulations, Alex Penny. I'm going to give you the player of the match for this game. Okay, well, okay, well, okay, well, okay, well, all do. Uh, okay, okay, well done to, okay, well done to Alex Penny. Put that on As, screen uh, there, but wait a second. I, I don't know what happened. I think I was writing it at the same time you were. So there we go. There's your player of the match, Alex Penny. Well done. Yes, yeah, yes, that's right. I was. Yeah, yes, that's right. I was. I was writing at the same time. But, <laughs> that's um, right, mate. It's all but, good. It's um, going across but, the bottom of the screen now. Alex Penny, man of the match, or player of the match. So, um, the one who looks like being the difference so far. Two minutes left um, at Agbra, and it's now night, and it's now, and uh, we've now gone into the 90th minute at Stamford Bridge between Chelsea and Plymouth. Still one all uh, over there. But um, it's now, I will actually but... uh, just quickly give an honourable uh, mention to Nathan uh, Cameron, the other defender as well. It was very close between the pair of those two. Yeah, very close between. Yes, very close between those pair. But you also can't rule out Luke Simpson as uh, as it looks like uh, as it looks like Thomas Sujak has been fouled just outside the. Um, no, it wasn't. It was Jared Bowen. He's just it's just inside. It's just inside the eighteen yard box. But. Um, but like I said, you also can't rule out Luke Simpson. No, 100%. Um, he's made some very good saves in this second half, 100%. He's uh, done everything he needed to do so far um, to keep us at 1-0. So, yeah, um, he was another one that was in the the, uh, the the bracket there as well. But any of these Kidderminster players, to be fair, they've, they've all put in a shift today. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that foul, that, I mean, that's a foul on Gerald Bowen, just it, who, who was almost outside the pitch altogether. What do you make of it? Yeah, well, it was a little bit unlucky there um to give that one in my opinion but uh yeah um it's a, another one really which was a little bit soft really yeah Alex Penny now uh, Alex Penny now it's gone straight to uh Sonny Ben Rama Ben Rama has to Ben Rama has to make this attack count he's got trying to go through Penny he he almost does but um well deflected but well deflected by Matt Preston. And it's now with Declan Rice. Rice passes to um I Rice passes to I couldn't see who, but it's now gone back towards Rice. And three minutes have been added, and three minutes have now been added on. West Ham need to make those three minutes count. They do and and Kidderminster have got three minutes to see it out now to obviously go through in the knee, uh go through and get their name into round five, sorry, as well. They might as well have to. Superb clearance by Kidderminster, and but the ball was picked up by um, Ariola and Morgan Smith tried to get it off Kurt Zuma, but he was white. But Zuma was wise. To, but Zuma was wise to it. As now Rice um, has the ball, he passes to uh, Pablo Fornells. Now it's gone straight back to Declan Rice. Declan Rice tries to get through and it deflected in, and West Ham have leveled things up. Heartbreak for Kidderminster there, Declan Rice. Just thunderbolts, uh, sorry, um, thunderbolt of an effort there. He just thunders that one into the back of the net there for West Ham. And he looks like he's saved his sides, blushes a little bit there. Looks like he's going to get it through two extra time now for West Ham. And heartbreak for Kidderminster, as I was saying. It is game on now at Agbra. Kidderminster have led, Kidderminster have led for much of the game, but... That but that goal by but that goal by Rice may well have may well have dashed those hopes. That it was it's definitely the goal that West Ham it was definitely the goal that West Ham needed. Rice just needed no second invitation. He just fired it straight in. Yeah, it's a great finish as well. We touched on Declan Rice when he was brought onto the field to play. Um, obviously, playing such a big part in England's uh, run to the Euro twenty twenty final. And, uh, you know, he saved a result here for his side as well. West Ham right on the verge of going out here against uh, Kidderminster Harriers of the National League North. But Declan Rice, the substitute, has saved them right now. 
Um, and it looks like we might be going for another half an hour, Nicholas, as well, the way things are looking at the moment. Pablo Fornals to Saeed Ben Rama, deflected well, deflected by a kid deflected by a kid amidst a defender. The 90 the 90th plus one minute um the um at, at the scoreline given Russ Penn a few minutes ago. He was possibly contemplating victory. What must be going through his head now? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you can see head in hands there, some of these Kidderminster players. Um you know, a uh, little bit, obviously, very, very, very uh, frustrated here that they haven't been able to see the job through. But Declan Rice and uh, his West Ham side there uh, did uh, get back into it in the second half and have looked better. But it's just you know, very, very hard for Kidderminster to take right now, um, obviously, being one nil ahead for so long and then letting the goal very, very late. And talking of Declan Rice, trying to go for another effort, but over the... But over the crossbar, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It looks. It doesn't matter. It will go to thirty extra minutes as we now reach the ninety. As we now reach the ninety third minute, and uh, and uh, and uh, and Declan Rice and Declan Rice must feel and Declan Rice must feel uh, pleased uh, pleased with that effort, and it will be a goal kick to wet to Kidderminster. It could well be. Uh, the last kick of this particular half. Simpson kicks the ball out um, of the Kidderminster goal. And there it goes. We go to extra time. Kidderminster looks as though they were going to... Kidderminster looks as though they were going to pretty much run away with this. But Declan Rice brought West Ham back in right at the death. And uh, and the and the uh, score after ninety full time minutes, Kidderminster Harriers won. West Ham United won. Yeah, no, almost. Um, you know, uh, almost, but not quite for Kidderminster. They're almost putting themselves in the hat for round five, but they are in the hat for round five still, as things stay as they are at the moment. But you have to give them loads and loads of credit here. The side that are five divisions below West Ham. For everything that they've thrown at this West Ham side, they've looked very, very good today. The side that are vying for promotion back to the National League as well. Um, and if they play like this throughout the remainder of the season, I can only see them going on and achieving that promotion, Kidderminster, as well. But in this game, they've put together a very good performance and well, they're only minutes away from getting the victory as well. So it's all about how they can dust uh, themselves down now and pull this one back in the second half. Well, well, in extra time, sorry. Be back with Nick, uh, with uh, Nicholas shortly as well, but uh, he's just had to go and get a um, quick refreshment there, or sort something out for a minute. But we'd be back with Nicholas in time for extra time anyway. But uh, kid and Mr. Harriers, as I was saying, almost but not quite for them. It's also extra time between Chelsea and Plymouth as well. That's also finished one-one. Um, and with uh, Aspen Aquita equalising from Gillespie's uh, goal. And of course, this one is going to extra time as well now. So, um, are you back with us, Nicholas, as we are just about to get ready for the first period of extra time now? Yes, yes, uh, yes, I'm actually back. And it's actually just kicked off uh, for extra time at at, uh, at, Stanford, at Stanford Bridge. Um, this is going, this is... It looks as though it, it looks as though it could well be a long uh, thirty minute period for for both teams there. Um, Russell Penn and David Moy certain I don't think were not ex were expecting anything like this and uh, and uh, extra time periods are known to uh, are known to uh, to take t uh, to uh, to uh, take a bit of a toll on uh, certain players. You know it's um, it. You know it wears that. You know it wears them down. But um, how do you think uh, they are going? How do you think they are going to uh, try and persist throughout thirty minutes? Yeah, so it's going to be interesting now to see uh, whether that late goal can, you know, really give the advantage towards West Ham um, as we now win extra time. But uh, Kidderminster have got to dust themselves down quickly and you know just try and get themselves back in front again now. Yes, that's right. They certainly will. I mean, ex, um, extra time will be starting in a in a, about a couple of minutes' time. It'll be West Ham who will who will kick us off. They are they are to go from left to right, um, Kidderminster right to left, and it looks like it will be Pablo Fornals 
who will who will kick us off for for this first period of extra time. Uh, no, actually, it's going to go into the uh, coin toss. That could, that could also make the difference as uh, as uh, Lewis Montrose um, has now taken up the captain's armband in place of Sam Austin. That's right. Who... Uh, just uh, Austin just been replaced, hasn't it? Just a, a moment ago there. Oh, sorry, earlier yeah. on there in the in the seventy uh, eighth minute, actually, wasn't it? When he was replaced by by Redmond. Sorry. That's right. That's right. So Kidderminster, they have to get Kidderminster. They have to get over that last. They have to get over that last minute shock and quickly if they are to if they are to pull some if they are to pull a victory out of the bag. And away we go for the first period of extra time at Agbra as uh, as uh, I think that was um, Morgan Smith who almost ha who who had it briefly. Now it's with uh, Caleb Richard straight to Lewis Montrose. Montrose. Uh, tries finds another player, but so uh, it skies into the it skies into the air. Now it's almost going back towards Montrose, but it's now picked up by four nails. Now it's gone straight to Nathan Cameron. Nathan Cameron, who's Nathan Cameron, who scored in who scored in their last game against Lamington on Tuesday night, and uh, picked up by and uh, the ball was uh, 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 picked up by Luke Simpson. Uh, do you think Kidderminster have to score um, early if they are to keep their hopes alive? Um, I think potentially, or at least stop West Ham from scoring early anyway in this uh, extra period. Um, it doesn't look, it, it almost looked like they wouldn't be because Yarmolenko um, tried to send it in, but it, but it went the wrong way. Yeah, it was a good play there from West Ham, getting it out to Yarmolenko there and West Ham uh, using that uh, last minute equaliser there um, in their favour at the minute to, to really try and you know get a, a winner here now. Corner to the Hammers. It goes straight in, but um, Alex Penny does well to uh, to uh, keep the ball um, out of the goal area. Not for long, though. It's now with Gerard Bowen straight to Declan Rice. Declan Rice now with the ball, who passes back to Fornals. Pablo Fornals, the Spain international, straight back to Gerard Bowen. Gerard Bowen tries to find some, tries to find a way through, but can't. It's good play from West Ham, getting it out to Gerard Bowen there. And again, this uh, Kidderminster defence is standing uh, firm, though. Very, mu very much, very much so. We're about, very much so. We're about, we're almost into the second minute of extra time. It's still Kidderminster one, West Ham one. Um, both sets of fans are now starting to feel pretty tired, particularly the younger ones there. Um, but um, they're still, but so uh, they're still uh, willing to uh, give um, their club that uh, bit of support, even if it is for and even if it is for another thirty extra minutes. As uh, uh, Kurt Zuma tries to head it to uh, to a West uh, to, to a fellow player, but uh, Kidderminster once again managing to hold their ground. Yeah, that's right. Kidderminster are holding their ground very well at the moment, as they have done throughout. Yes, it, yes, indeed. And a throwing has been awarded to Harriers, as um, as which is taken. It's now gone towards um, Ashley Hemmings. Ashley Hemmings tries to uh, go around Mark Noble. I mean Craig Dawson, but cut, but couldn't quite do so. And uh, it'll be another corner to to West Ham. Meantime, it is still. Um, Chelsea won, Plymouth Argyle won at Stamford Bridge. That's as right, a, and, and uh, potential for, for penalties in both games. And, of course, penalties was the deciding factor in the game last night. Corner kick taken by West Ham, but, uh, I mean, Kidderminster, sorry, but, uh, but, but nothing comes of it, and it'll be another throw-in to Kidderminster, courtesy of Amari Sterling or will it? No, it won't be Sterling. It's going to be Caleb Richards to, to take the throw, which he does. Richards with the ball for Kidderminster. Now it's with uh, Lewis Montrose, but it's out again for another throw. And it will be taken again by Caleb Richards. Richards tries to... Uh, Richards tries to aim well. He does finds. I think that was Hemmings. Now it's with um, uh, Bajrami. Back to Montrose. Montrose 
Montrose crosses, tries to find uh, Amari Morgan-Smith. He does, but uh, taken away by Suchak. Not for long, though. It's now back with Richards. But um, West, but now it's it. But now it seems like um, uh, Montrose has the ball. I was just going to say it seems like um, uh, West Ham appeared to have uh, gained a bit more momentum. Amari Starling tries to go for a goal, but too far out, in my view. Yeah, that's right. It was a good play though from uh, Kidderminster. Just a uh, just a minute there, getting the ball out to um, the uh, attacker there. But it was uh, good defending actually from West Ham as well. They did what they needed to do. Yeah, so, yes, it's uh, yes, they certainly did. And it's now Thomas Suchak um, uh, with the ball for the Hammers, and it's now gone back to uh, Declan Rice who finds Craig Dawson. Dawson now with the ball. And passes back to, um, I think that's Kurt Zuma. Yes, indeed, it is Zuma. Zuma to, I think that, Zuma to, I think that was um, uh, Craswell. Craswell passes, um, Craswell passes to, I think, a midfielder teammate. Now it's back with Craswell. But uh, West Ham needs, but West Ham need to work. Uh, Need to uh, need to at least possibly get another goal to assure themselves of a victory. It looks like they might deflected off the chest of Ben Rama, but uh, West Ham again proving to be very form proved to be a very formidable defence force. Yeah, they're doing very well at the minute. Uh, uh, Kidderminster Harriers uh, to be in this game. Uh, West Ham, uh, you know, since the goal, you can see even at the end of the ninety minutes or oh, sorry the. Uh, 90 plus three minutes, wasn't it? Uh, when West Ham scored their goal, that so they wanted to get another one, even to stop it from going into extra time. But West Ham at the minute are looking the more likely if anyone's going to score in this extra period. Yes, I certainly do. I mean, yes, yes. So I, I, I'm beginning to, I'm beginning to feel you're right. I'm beginning to feel you're right with that one, Mike, because, um, because, um, I've act, because I've actually been secretly rooting for Kidderminster. I'm not going to lie in this game. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I mean, you're no, supposed to be. I think uh, everyone loves an upset, mate. I can't, uh, you know, I, I can't say that I didn't uh, want Kidderminster to cause an upset either. So, you know, I'm with you on that. Ball cleared out by Simpson. And it's now gone to uh, Craig Dawson. Dawson finds um, Ari, Ariola. Ariola, do, Ariola doing really well in place of the injured Lucas Fabianski. Uh, no, but I mean, I mean, Dawson uh, tries to. Dawson passes to Yarmolenko. Andre Yarmolenko. He's Andre Yarmolenko. He's been he's been a major force out here today. He's played well, hasn't he, for uh, for West Ham? Um, potentially, he could have had a penalty as well. But uh, you know, we both sort of tended to sort of uh, tended to agree that the uh, referee got it right, and the penalty would have been very harsh on the kid, Mister Man. Still one all between Kidderminster and West Ham after, after over 17 and a quarter minutes. You're listening to the commentary hub with me, Nick, with me, Nicholas Jones and Mike Harnham. And you can also hear us on the commentary up to Jaddock Football, JB Sports and Storm FM. We're also on Twitch um, and also and also Mike and also Mike's um, Twitch channel as well. And it's still one all between Chelsea at, and it's still one all between Chelsea and Plymouth. Um, David Moyes takes a drink of water to uh, to calm to to, uh, to calm his nerves down. I think he start. I think he's starting to get. I think he's starting to uh, to get himself more energy. Yeah, and I think uh, the substitutions have played a part. Declan Rice coming on made a big part as well for uh, West Ham there. Um, obviously scoring the goal, and I think he uh, has played a, a big part in West Ham getting level. And uh, obviously, you know, West Ham. Uh, looking to get themselves in front now as well. But uh, Declan Rice coming on has played a big part here for West Ham because um, obviously he loves to you know, uh, become a hero or to, to make a difference in these sort of games. And um, that's exactly what he's done. Uh, I was just about to say that uh, Bowen uh, almost had... Oh, and I was about to say that Bowen was, uh, get, w w was a very close inside goal. I think he almost... Um, I think he almost... Um, fat, I think he almost um, had a chance... I think he almost had a chance to, to score himself, but um, he uh, he brought down uh, uh, Caleb, uh, uh, Caleb Richards. I thought was a cross in by Ben Rama, but um, but Bowen just couldn't get to it in time. Yeah, it was a good play from West Ham again, um, looking to get themselves in front now. Um, but uh, Kidderminster, you know, doing everything that they can as well. 
Um, if they can get through to the first pivot through the first period of extra time, sorry, then um, you know uh, the, you never know what might happen because yesterday, obviously, we saw it go to penalties, and um, if it goes to penalties, it's anyone's game, isn't it? So Kidderminster could potentially be looking at that as well, as uh, I think um, they're going to be making a sub of their own shortly in the next minute or two. They'll have they'll have to because it, they'll have to make another sub very soon because they've only made one so far this game. Um, I think they made but, two, haven't they? I think uh, Redmond was the second one. I think they made two. Yes, uh, I guess that's right too. So they've only got, so they've only got, so they've only got three or two. So they've only got three or two left. It looks like one of them's getting ready now. Um, having a having a quick having a having a having a quick swig um, before he gets ready to before he gets ready to come on. Throw into Kidderminster. We're approaching the tenth minute of extra time. This is still. Kidderminster one, West Ham one, and uh, now it's with um, uh, uh, Devonte Redmond. Devonte Redmond sends the ball out, and it's another throw to, and it's and it's another throw to West Ham. Whatever, and uh, and uh, and it looks as though a Kidderminster substitution is going to be made. It will be Jaden White. To, yeah, the uh, one of the men on. that you you touched on him earlier on, didn't you? You said about him potentially having an impact in this game. So he's got uh, a bit of time here and extra time to do so. It certainly, it certainly looks like it will be as Ashley Hemmings makes way for, for Jaden Weiss. Ashley Hemmings, he's been, he's been a great thorn in uh, West Ham's side throughout this game, hasn't he? Yeah, he's played very, very well. Um, he's looked very dangerous for uh, Kidderminster in an attacking sense. And um, yeah, I think Kidderminster can certainly... Uh, look, you know, be very pleased with his performance today. I'm sure Vas Penn would be delighted with the way he's played. Jaden White's came. Jaden White's one of the players to come through Kidderminster Harriers Academy throughout the first part of this season. He was on loan as another non-league side, Stafford Rangers. But um, but uh, but um, but he's but he's but he's on the pit. But he's on the pitch now, and the throwing given to West Ham to be taken by. Ryan Fredericks to Pablo Fornals now gone to uh, Declan Rice. Rice passes back to um, Rice passes back to uh, uh, Fredericks. Now it's with uh, Thomas Suchek. Suchek fouled. I think that might have been by Montrose. Uh, indeed, it was. Um, but um, but uh, what do you make of that? Yeah, it was a foul there. Uh, Montrose catching his man Suchek there. Um, you can't really argue with him, anything other than that. As uh, West Ham are looking to get themselves, you know, that all important goal now. Um, and as we were just saying a minute ago, you, you said about Kidderminster having two subs to, to make now. Um, obviously, with the one that's just been made as well, uh, West Ham have made all five of theirs, but they made it within the 90 minutes. So, I want there's still two more players that can make a difference for Kidderminster and um, be interested to see who those players are that Russ Penn decides to go to. Free kick given to West Ham to be taken by Cresswell and just bounces and, and just bounces the other side of the goal. Yeah, it's an, a poor effort, really, from Cresswell. Obviously, he's a set-piece specialist, really, the uh, the West Ham um, fullback there. But uh, when it comes to that one, he just got it completely wrong, didn't he? And that looked like another attempt on goal. It, I think it just clattered off. it just clattered off the post and Luke Simpson just couldn't get to it in time. That's right. Yeah, there's another opportunity there for West Ham. Uh, but Luke Simpson, to be fair, got, might have got a little bit lucky there, but he deserves that for the way that he played in uh, the, the game itself or the way that he's played so far. He deserves all the he deserves all the luck in the he deserves all the he deserves all the luck in the world with that one as um as uh, as uh, as uh, as um, Alvin Martin, who won the uh, the FA Cup with West Ham in nineteen eighty. Now of course now, of course, a pundit to talk sports. I mean, I mean, he kn he knows what it's like to um, to uh, to uh, to be in uh, to be in a tough competition whilst playing for a top club. Yeah, he does absolutely. A very good player in his day, Alvin Martin, as well. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. He certainly was, and also, um, and also, uh, and also, it's worth mentioning that uh, West Ham, that West Ham back in '94 included uh, people who have gone on to become managers, and one of those was a, and one of those was a certain Martin Allen, uh, the former Barnes and Chesterfield manager. As a free kick has been given to West Ham to be taken by Sterling, 
And it's now gone to Amari Morgan White. Morgan White down in the Morgan White now down in the box. So is a couple so are a couple of other players. Um try and sort try and sort this one out, Jonathan Moss, because I certainly can't. No, I think uh, the Kidderman's demand the there um was looking for a penalty, but I think it would have been a, a very harsh one uh, to to give. I think uh he's looking for it there. Um and Jonathan Moss didn't give it and, and rightly so in my opinion too. Well, you well you well you certainly cleared that one up. No, well you certainly cleared that one up. No question. I think I think I think it looked like uh, Morgan White went down of his own. I think it looked like Morgan White went down of his own accord there. But um, or was he caught out by Rice's momentum? I think it was. I think it was. I think it was surely the latter. But anyway, no penalty has been awarded. Although Ariola looked like he trod on him. Anyway, so a goal kick given to West Ham. Roll out to Craig Dawson. Dawson now with the ball. We're coming up to the 15th minute of extra time. How many minutes were how many minutes will be added on? We are yet to see. And there it goes. There goes the there goes the end of the first period of extra time. Neither side willing to budge or concede. It's now it's still one all at Agbra. Yeah, Chelsea are two one up now against Plymouth. That's a heartbreak for Plymouth Argyle. It was in the 105th minute. Um, the goal from Marcus Alonso there, set up by Kai Havertz. So Chelsea have turned it around from 1-0 down to lead at Stamford Bridge right now in extra, uh, extra time as well. Yes, yes, certainly. Yes, certainly indeed. Both sides have now, both sides have now got to regroup and... That they've, they've now got to regroup and think whatever fresh tactics they can use in order to um, in order to bring themselves forward in, and also in order to get themselves further. Um, what do you think Kidderminster should do in order to um, in, in order to win? I think, or, or, although I think I can see a couple of people attending to uh, what looks like Amari Morgan Smith. So that knock could well have been more serious than it looked. Yeah, there's a substitution there for Kidderminster, um, which is one of their. Uh subs that they're still going to be able to use and it's a good decision I believe to to use them as well they might as well use them and, and throw these players on um I think it's going to be Martin to come on in place of Morgan Smith I believe okay well okay well okay we'll check for you um we'll check for you as of when it happens but uh, but uh, what have West Ham got to do to but what have West Ham got to do to um to uh to 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 make sure it's uh, to to make sure that the next round goes to them other than score they've got to uh, they've got to uh, step it up a bit more haven't they yeah they have um you know the second half of the game they were better uh, the first period of extra time there they you know were the side that were taking it to Kidderminster as well more than vice versa but uh yeah i think more the same in regards to the way west Ham were playing um cuz they had a very Good first period of extra time there without you know making it count um, in regards to getting themselves another goal. Okay, so okay, so okay, okay, so it looks as though it'll be West Ham to um to uh to uh, to, to, uh, to kick us off at the second period of extra time. It'll be um and it looks like it'll be uh Andre Yamale Yamalenko who will who will who who will who will, who will be the man to uh, to start who, who who will be the man to to start with this one as indeed Kezia Martin uh Kezia Martin uh, comes comes on for um for uh, for Kidderminster in place of Amari Morgan Smith um just a, did, a, uh, a question for you as well if you're Russ Penn and if you're you know uh, in the shoes of uh, the Kidderminster manager right now you know how long do you reckon it will be until he tells his kidmates to decide to potentially start settling for penalties. Um, possibly, um, possibly like the first couple of minutes in. I was also about to mention for Kezia Martin, um, former a former a former Barnsley youth, uh, a, a former Barnes a former player at uh, Barnsley's youth level. So uh, he obviously, so uh, he obviously must be very good. As uh, West Ham have now taken possession with Declan Rice. Rice now with the ball. He passes to side Ben Rama. Ben Rama towards Creswell. Creswell tries to uh, cross to somebody up front, but couldn't quite do it. It's now four nails. Four nails. Great bit of deflection by Kidderminster. It's gone straight to Ryan Fredericks. West Ham. I guess West Ham appeared desperate to try and score that second one, but West Ham are just as keen to keep this one out. Headed away by Jaden White. Now it's gone straight back to Aaron Creswell. 
Now it's gone, and now it's with Sai Ben Rama. Ben Rama now with the ball for West Ham. Ben Rama crosses into the goal area, but picked up by Sue Check. I'm running yeah, out. So of both sides really going for this now, aren't they? Yeah, Kidderminster and West Ham. Um, Kidderminster really, uh, you know, unlucky not to have won the game, obviously, uh, in the 90 minutes and with the additional time that was added on when West Ham scored their equaliser as well. But uh, now, you know, West Ham are getting more of a foothold in the game and West Ham looking to obviously make their uh, sort of league um, position count. Obviously, the, the fact there's so many league positions and sort of like positions and leagues uh, between them. But Kidderminster are still um, standing up and, and sort of dealing with everything that West Ham are throwing at them as well right now. Yes, it looks like they certainly are throwing given to throwing given to Kidderminster um, after uh, in only the uh, second in only the second minutes of uh, in only the second minutes of extra time, and it will be Caleb Richards who will take who will take the throw in. Uh, it looks looks for the correct angle to throw. It. Indeed, he does, but um, but uh, intercepted, but intercepted, but intercepted by West Ham. And it's now back with uh, Kidderminster. Now with uh, Jaden White. Jaden White tries to find um, um, Amari Sterling, but uh, but West Ham just gets in the way there. Yeah, West Ham are doing very well there. Obviously, uh, stopping Kidderminster from getting any momentum right now. They certainly are, and it's going to be. They certainly are, and uh, Ariola manages to uh, roll the ball out towards. Uh, towards the West Ham defenders. Now it's with uh, Declan Rice. Rice passes to Creswell. Creswell back towards Rice. Declan Rice tries. To, Declan Rice tries to look for another. Op Declan Rice tries to cross it up the field, but uh, blocked by uh, but blocked by Kidderminster. Now it's with uh, Jaden White. Jaden White tries to uh, go around Rice. He does, and uh, and is now looking to try and uh, get through the rest of the defenders, but can't because Zuma. Manages to manages to uh, to block him off, and it's now Kurt Zuma with the ball for West Ham. Zuma looking for uh, Zuma trying to uh, look for someone to to pass it to. He does. He finds Rice now. Aaron Creswell, Creswell now doing well to uh, Creswell now doing well to hold on to the ball. He passes to Ben Rama. Ben Rama now straight towards um, now straight towards Thomas Suchek. Suchek back to Ben Rama. But out it goes for another throw. It, that looked that looked like the start of an attack by uh, by West Ham, but uh, it was just unlucky that it was um, given away. Yeah, absolutely. There, it's a good play for West Ham, and uh, obviously they were very unlucky there. Incidentally, you touched on Kurt Zuma just a moment ago. You know, obviously I mentioned earlier on in regards to Chelsea being knocked out by a League One side with Bradford. Kurt Zuma was in fact in the Chelsea side that day. Oh, coincidence! Oh, coincidence! Given that, oh, coincidence! Given that Chelsea are now ahead of Plymouth Argyle in their match, but um, but uh, but uh, West Ham still level, but West Ham still level against Kidderminster Harriers at Agbra. Mo Salah was, also was involved in that side for Chelsea that day as well. Who? Mo Salah. M Mo Salah, yes, Mo Salah, of course. Now at Liverpool, but back to the here and now as um. As uh, West Ham have now, now with uh, Yarmolenko with the ball, Yarmolenko, uh, Yarmolenko easily the tallest man on the pitch. Passes to Jarrod Bowen, but cut away by um, Caleb Richards, and it's now with, um, uh, and it's now and it's and it was with uh, Jarrod Bowen, I think it was, but it's now been picked up by. Uh, Oh yeah, somebody at West Ham. Now it's back with uh, Ben Rama. Ben Rama now with the ball for West Ham, who passes to Yarmolenko, and there and in it goes. It's West Ham second, but offside flag has gone. It doesn't count. Yeah, right decision as well from the uh, assistant referee for me, um, the man on the uh, the goal line there who puts the ball into the back of the net is certainly offside. So uh, Kidderminster might have got a lucky escape a little bit, but uh, to be fair, it's uh, the right call. He's, he's offside for sure. Certainly he did get a lucky escape. It was actually Ben Rama who played. It was Ben Rama who played the ball into Yarmolenko, and I think, and I think that might have been uh, Gerard Bowen who who might have gotten the last touch. But so, uh, who do you think it was that uh, um, uh, uh, that got the last one? 
Yeah, I'm not too sure. He might have been bowing on the, the goal line possibly, but as, as I just said, his uh, offside uh, was called and called correctly as well. Baj, Gerardo Bajrami looks like he'll be... Gerardo Bajrami uh, comes off the pitch and makes way... And makes way for and makes way for Keith Lowe. Keith Lowe, um, he's played at Kidderminster for around 150 games, so he knows the club well. Over yeah, three spells, the fans call him Mr. Kidderminster Harriers, given his given his uh, given his length of time there. And yeah, knows, um, knows the club very very well. Does the 36 uh, year old as well? Um, and a player that you know, another player that's had experience playing in higher divisions, obviously starting off at Wolves and also uh, had a loan spell with Burnley as well. Yeah, coincident yeah, coincidentally, Keith Lowe actually faced Declan Rice in the um in a League Cup match in uh, twenty eighteen while at Macclesfield Town and uh, Macclesfield actually lost eight nil to uh, to West Ham. So this is a so this is a more dramatic game for these two to meet again. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh the experience coming on is what Rough Hands look to here now. Obviously, seeing that West Ham have put the ball into the back of the net, although, you know, fair enough, it was disallowed for offside. Uh, but bringing on another experienced defender um, is, uh, you know, what Russ Penn's decided to do there is I think Kurt Zima's got a knock as well. And that's all the West Ham subs been made earlier on in the game. So he's going to be having to continue no matter what. Yeah, that looks, yeah, yeah, it looks like Zuma is in a bad way with that. Um, Looks like Zuma is in a bad way with that nasty knock, and that is not what he or West Ham needs um, at um, at this crucial time. As you said, they've already made. As you said, they've already made those substitutions, so it could. So um. So um. So uh. It looks as though David Moyes might well be ruining that decision, or if worse comes to worse, and he is in, and he is in a worse, and and he is in a. And he is in a much worse way than we think, then it looks as though West Ham might finish this game with 10 men. Yeah, but, and, and uh, if it goes to penalties as well, be uh, interested to see if Kurt Zuma has to take one uh, if it gets to him um, and how that you know might play a part. The fact he's obviously got that knock now as well. You are massive, says the uh, uh, tin for uh, 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 says the foil trophy. I think that's what it said. Um, I couldn't quite tell what it was, but um, but anyway, um, uh, the fans are definitely showing their support for uh, for Kidderminster um, all the same. Um, anyone um, anyone who saw this in a, anyone who saw this uh, clearer than I did, let me know, please. Um, as uh, Kidderminster get the game back underway, um, Kurt Zuma looks like. Kurt Zuma looks like he will not be taking any further part in this game. So he's obviously standing on the sidelines, but uh, no, he's actually but no, he's actually gone straight back into it. Um, I was worried he wasn't going to be able to carry on playing, but um, but no, he appears to. He's, he's got to really obviously West Ham made all their subs, and I think they don't really want to be having to play with a, a man less, especially a defender as well. If Kidderminster are going to come at them, yeah. So yeah, so um, he has to. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so basically, uh, Zuma just has to uh, suck it up and uh, and, yeah, and just, uh, just do everything he can to. I'm, I'm sure probably the uh, the adrenaline and whatever might actually help him through, but I think he's moving a little bit more freely now, which is good anyway. I never really thought of, I never really thought about adrenaline anyway. As um, as uh, as uh, Kezia Martin um, had the ball briefly for had the ball briefly for Kidderminster. Uh, Harriers were now just six minutes away from the end of extra time. It looks as though it will be going to a penalty shootout between Kidderminster Harriers and West Ham United. Chelsea still lead Plymouth Argyle by two goals to one at Stamford Bridge. Cresswell now towards Ben Rama. Ben Rama now with the ball for uh, West Ham United. Tries to go around Alex Penny. He He's looking for a way through. Almost has it, but... Uh, but well blocked by Lewis Montrose. Yeah, he's done well since he came on as Lewis Montrose as well. Um, obviously, he didn't start the game, but since he was brought on uh, by Russ Penn and brought into the fray, he's uh, played well for Kidderminster as well. Corner briefly, corner quickly taken by West Ham. It doesn't go their way as um, as uh, Caleb Richards now picks up the ball for what for for Kidderminster finds uh, uh, Jada finds uh, Jaden White, but. Um, but um, but that ta but that tactic did not work, and it's now back with Declan Rice for West Ham. 
You're listening to the Commentary Hub with Nicholas Jones and Mike Harneman. And you can also hear us on the Commentary Hub to JDAC Football, JB Sports, Storm FM, and also the Commentary Hub's Twitch channel and also Mike's uh, Twitch channel as well as now Pablo Fornaus has the ball for West Ham, deflected by Montrose. Um, Again, they might good, have good play, Lewis, but, again, off, well. but, but offside, offside. Sorry, Mike, I've just spotted the offside flag there. No, that's fine. I was just saying, good play from uh, Lewis Montrose again there. Um, and obviously, you were just going through the uh, platforms that people can listen as well. And I just wanted to mention, um, obviously, for anyone that is listening, you uh, to uh, go and check out our streaming partner for the season, Melon, as well. So, uh, melonapp.com to check them out, and obviously. Um, player of the match I gave to Alex Penny and that of course is in uh, sort of conjunction with our uh, fantastic um, commentary services Barry Swain's commentary services who are sponsoring that one Aaron Creswell now for Aaron Creswell now for West Ham after a throw in it's now back with it's now gone to Declan Rice Rice towards um, Rice towards I think that might have been I think that might have been Ryan Fredericks Fredericks crosses. I think he was aiming for uh, for uh, Creswell, but but so uh, where's the ball gone? Where's the ball gone? I know it's one of those ones. It just seems to the ball seems to have disappeared for a second, didn't it? Yeah, probably gone. <laughs> probably on its probably on its way to the moon by now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like that. Anyway, could, could well be. Could well be. <laughs> anyway, anyway, they managed to get a new one. So a throw into West Ham with about two with about two and a half minutes to go until the. Until the yeah. end of the second period of extra time, Alex Penny takes the throw, and it's now picked up by and was almost picked up by um, Amari Sterling. But so Craig Dawson did well to, uh, but Craig Dawson did well to to hold him off. Once again, it's another throw in to West Ham, taken by Alex Penny, and now Lewis Montrose. Montrose passes to Penny. But it's now that's uh, almost cleared up field by Kidderminster. Um, but so once again, it'll be a throw in again to West Ham. I was just going to say that maybe this is the stage where the Kidderminster players and the kids, Kidderminster backroom staff, they will be looking at um, potentially taking it to penalties now or settling for penalty shootout. It looks like it, it looks like it might, well, it looks like it might as well, it looks like it might as well go to penalties um, as the clock, as the clock runs down. Kidderminster but, uh, a very good performance, actually. They've been very strong, haven't they, of the uh, side from the National League North? Very much, very much so. As um, very much so as uh, West Ham appear to uh, appear to uh, be more in control, more in control with the ball. It's now gone straight to Jarrod Bowen. Bowen um, had it briefly, but um, I think he collided with. Uh, I think he collided with uh, Nathan Cameron. But um, yeah, he did. Nathan Cameron was another player that played very well today and was uh, in my reckoning for player of the match. As uh, we're getting right towards the the stage now, where if somebody scores, they will go on and definitely win this game. And it looks as though, and it looks as though Chelsea are definitely going to win their game against Plymouth uh, against Plymouth Argyle. As we have now about forty seconds left of of extra time at Agra between Kidderminster Harriers and West Ham United, it looks like it will be definitely going to towards a penalty shootout. As Kidderm as a Kidderminster now have control have have now now have control of the ball. We're we're into the last twenty seconds. As West and a lot of jockeying around. I think I think all the players just want uh, the penalty shoes out to come uh, right here, right now. Yeah, as, Kidderminster um, uh, certainly look like they're settling for it. Yeah. Throw in last ditch attempt. Throw in to be given by uh, by uh, Alex Penny. And one minute of extra time has been added, obviously because of I think maybe because of that sort of last minute jockeying around. I think they were. I think the officials must be thinking that the players were starting to waste time a little bit. But, um, yeah, but there anyway. were a few uh, substitutes made in this uh, extra time as well. Yes, yes, yes. Good point. Got to count that one as well. So uh, Thomas Suchek now for, uh, for West Ham, who passes to Creswell. Creswell now crosses towards um, Saeed Ben Rama. Ben Rama does well to to hold on. We're into the last. We're into the last almost twenty or so seconds, and it's now with Pablo Fornells. Fornells, they've got it. West Ham, they've got to do something quickly if they want to. If they want to, we'll save it right at the end. 
and it looks as though Aaron Creswell might be doing it. And Gerard Bowen makes it. And Gerard Bowen has scored right at the death. It's all over for Kidderminster Harriers now. Heartbreak for Kidderminster. We said it at the end of the game uh, that they were just a matter of minutes away from going through. But then obviously uh, Declan Rice equalised and there. It's happened again. It's happened twice in the same game. West Ham just about getting themselves uh, over the line here now. And credit to Kidderminster Harriers because they put in a stellar performance. And uh, it's taken two very, very late goals, one at the end of the game and one at the end of extra time there to deny Kidderminster from going to the penalty shootout. And it would have been uh, nice for, for Kidderminster to do so, but they've put in a very, very good performance against West Ham here. 113 places between them, as you say. Five divisions didn't look like that on the day. West Ham, very, very fortunate to go through. You did say you did say that Aaron Creswell was a set piece specialist. He certainly coordinated this one very well indeed. And Gerard Bowen was there, ready to pounce, just tapped it in with his left foot. Heartbreak for Russ Penn, relief for David Moyes. He lost to Kidderminster Harriers as a player in the 93-4 season. He's done it. He may well have done it as a manager. And the West Ham fans are going ballistic now. They know that they know that a slot in the fifth round is pretty much theirs. As as uh, it, but um, the game is not the game is not officially over. The referee hasn't blown his whistle. He has now. It's full time at Agbra. Kidderminster Harriers came in there with the with all the hype and the belief that they could that they could spring yet another surprise as they did with Reading in the third round. They couldn't do it this time. West Ham came on strong in the second half and they must have used extra time to their advantage. We thought early on that they were going to go out, but they proved us wrong. And it will be West Ham United in the fifth round. Final score at Agbra. Kidderminster Harriers won. West Ham United two and it's and at Stamford Bridge this is now full time. Chelsea beat Plymouth Argyle by two goals to one. Yeah, so the two sides there um, who look like they were going to cause an upset for a while in Kidderminster Harriers and also Plymouth Argyle just fall short in the end. But you have to give all the plaudits and all the credit to Russ Penn and Steve Schumacher's side for uh, obviously. The parts that they've played in these two cup sides this afternoon. Uh, West Ham and Chelsea go through, but Kidderminster and Plymouth um, have certainly had their moments in tonight's, uh, sorry, in today's um, cup ties as well. Not quite the result we wanted, obviously, with uh, the upset and everything like that. Of course, Middlesbrough were victorious yesterday in the first game that we covered against Manchester United. So we've had one upset already. Kidderminster and Plymouth. Not quite for them. They both put in very, very stellar performances, though. Um, but just uh, beaten by the uh, stronger opposition in the end. And, um, you know, very, very late goals for um, West Ham there as well. And it's, it's heartbreak for Kidderminster, isn't it, Nicholas? Right at the end of the game and then right at the end of extra time. Pretty much last kick of extra time as well for uh, Jared Bowen to win it. Yes, but yes, but like you say, Kidderminster, they get the fans are giving them a huge standing ovation. They well and truly deserve it. Not just Russ Penn and Stephen Schumacher, as you said, but all the players, but all the players that have been on this game throughout this game, uh, whether they were substituted or not. You have to give you have to give all the credit to the likes of Sam Austin, um, Amari Morgan Smith, Ashley Hemmings, Amari Sterling, and also Alex Penny. Of course, the man. Of course, Alex Penny, the man who scored. Um, Jaden White, he was a pretty good thorn in the side as well, but um, but um, it was not to be for wet, but but it was not to be for Kidder, Mr. Harriers. We at the commentary hub wish them all the best for the remainder of the season as they chase promotion um, in the National League North, and and are coming up and are coming up later th- and coming up later this evening on the commentary hub. It is still FA Cup, it is still FA Cup weekend action. Do please stay with, do please join us again. For Tottenham against Brighton at eight o'clock with JB Stuttard and Luke Turton. Tomorrow it is Liverpool against Cardiff at 12 o'clock with Russ Vernon on commentary duty. And we will also be covering the fifth round draw. And at four o'clock, Nottingham Forest 
who beat Arsenal in the third round, host the reigning champions, Leicester City, and Trevor Sports and Chris Whiteman will be behind will be on will be behind the mic for that one. Mike, thank you very much for uh, for summarising the game w- uh, with me between uh, Kidderminster and West Ham. It was a yes again. It was a pleasure to be uh, yes again. It was a, a pleasure to be behind the mic with you. Yeah, absolutely, pleasure uh, to be alongside you as well. Unfortunately, Kidderminster just fell short, but play like that, Kidderminster fans. You'll uh, certainly be back in. Um, the National League next season, put in a very good performance and I'm sure they'll only use that to their advantage now. Um, obviously, you know, knowing what they can do against a, a West Ham side, five leagues above them. So credit to Kidderminster, just fell short on the night. Declan Rice, the substitute, and Jared Bowen, the two men, obviously, who scored West Ham's goals. But Kidderminster, for me, you know, you, you, you certainly saw there um, why there's, uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, opportunity for this Kidderminster to decide to go on and achieve promotion. And I can see them doing so, Nicholas. Yes, yes, I would have to agree with you, Mike. I wouldn't say they would achieve promotion outright, but so they definitely but they'll definitely be in content but they'll definitely be in contention for the playoffs. Um so thank you to so thank you to us. So thank you to everyone for for tuning in uh, to this to 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 the commentary hubs coverage. Of Kidderminster Harris against West Ham United. We are the home of alternative commentary. Join us again later this evening when Bright when Bryson hosts Tottenham. From from Mike Harneman and Nicholas Jones and everybody else at the Commentary Hub. Goodbye for now. Goodbye everyone. Take care. Come and join us again later on as uh, Tottenham entertained Brighton. Plymouth uh, fell short. Kidderminster fell short. But credit to the League One and the uh, side from the National League North. Uh, they gave everything that they can. Just neither side could do enough on the night, on the the day, in the end, and both fell short. But uh, credit, as I said earlier, to Russ Penn and Steve Schumacher for you know uh, giving both West Ham and Chelsea very very good games. They were made to um, work hard for their wins, but they got there in the end.